reason to believe they will be. It's a chance against the number three team in the country, the team that wins on the road, and the team that is tough to beat anywhere. It's Jonathan Harris, number three, Dexter Siegler, number 34. They are your deep receivers for the Miami Hurricanes. Harris has one for 17 yards. Siegler won for 13 yards. Mitch Berger is coming off of a mild concussion suffered in the Stanford game last week. When he made a tackle, he didn't try to make it. He made it, but he paid for it. So Miami will have the ball first in a game that will be played on the rug in Boulder, Colorado. beyond the field of play. What can we expect from Dennis Erickson and his Miami Hurricanes today? This is what he told me yesterday. We're going to make our money throwing the football, and I'm convinced of that, so we're going to have to throw it more than we, than we have lost in two years. Frank Costa is the man charged with that responsibility, making his third career start today. He played some last year in relief. But it's his ball game right now. It's his job to lose. The backs and receivers, and we emphasize Jones and Harris here because we think they'll be throwing to them more today than you have seen in the first two games, as Bob Greasy touched on and Dennis Erickson said. We had a penalty called as the ball went deep in beyond the field of play. Costa was out there, and now they have come back off the field, and it appears that the Big East crew has decided that they will re-kick it, which gives us a little more time to set up the circumstances for you. The Colorado Buffaloes were highly rated and highly touted. They went up to Palo Alto to Stanford last week and got beat, a game in which they led by 10 points with just over four minutes to play, and they are still shocked somewhat, but they see this game as a chance to get the boat sailing again. Now let's join Jack Aroot. Keith, last week at Stanford, the defensive secondary for the Buffaloes missed eight important tackles. They made the hits, but they didn't make the tackle. The coach, Nuxowitz, says they had to get back to basics, wrap their arms around them when they make the tackle instead of the big hit. That's what they're looking for today. They will, the Miami Hurricanes want Colorado to re-kick it. They want a chance to return it, but you don't get to return an awful lot of kicks here at Folsom Field because obviously we're up beyond a mile high. The ball carries well. That's why Colorado kickers are always among the best in the country. Jonathan Harris is five yards deep in the end zone, and Dexter Sigler says, no, 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 and stay where you are. We'll take it up on the 20-yard line. The big people up front offensively for Miami have to deliver against Colorado particularly with K.C. Jones, the lightest of the group, being the bell cow across the offensive line. Three wide receivers in the ball game, Keith, one, only one back, so it looks as though that Erickson will start with his one back, three wide, going back to what he's done best in his four years at Miami. Donnell Bennett is the one back. He's a 227-pound junior from Fort Lauderdale. They'll put it in the air on the first play, and Costa is sacked behind the line of scrimmage by Kerry Hicks, number 94. Colorado does not intend to let Frank Costa have time to look around the field. He's going to have to unload it in a hurry. The offensive line has been one of the problems. This offensive uh, lost nine starters from last year's club right up the middle at Hicks number 94 with the first play the first sack for Colorado loss is 10 yards back to the 10 and uh, Larry Jones is into the backfield replacing Donnell Bennett it may have been Bennett that didn't pick up the man breaking through drop ball is on the ground and Larry Jones covers it and there's no question but what Miami has a case of nerve. Colorado is trying to jump them right off the gun here. And we have seen, Bob, over the last three weeks, one team after another digs themselves a hole. The Colorado defense is a good one. They had too much to fool with last week. Just let them play. Holland, Clavel, and Hicks. That's the attitude of the coaching staff. That outside uh, a linebacker or defensive end, Wolfork, is a real good one. Bennett is back in at the single back. 
from the nine. Foster gets his pass away, and it is completed up beyond the 30 to the 32, and that's a Miami first down. And the man on the catch is Chris T. Jones, number 85. That will take some of the starts out of your pass rush. What a great throw, and not only does it hurt the defense, but a huge boost offensively for Costa and the Hurricanes. As you mentioned, they were they came in, they're a little bit nervous. You take a look at the defensive backs. Dalton Simmons is starting for Chris Hudson. Hudson, an outstanding player, will not play today because of an injury. Larry Jones stays in the backfield behind Costa, double wide, top of the picture, first down at their own 32 for the team. Costa throwing again, pumps it and lets it go. Throws it into some traffic, but completes the pass just at the marker. He may have another first down as A.C. Tellison, the big man among the receivers at 6'4", 205, went up and got it. And they'll move the chain. And so Frank Costa has, for the moment at least, survived the onslaught from the Buffalo defense. He goes to midfield, and Ron Wolfork brought him down. The things that both of these teams have to do, Miami, they need some consistency on their offense. They've uh, lost nine starters. They need to find an offense that they can live with and, and, and production. Colorado, they need big plays. They've got an outstanding offense. Miami's got a great defense. They need big plays to win this game. Jamie German has checked in. True freshman from Fort Myers, number seven, a flyer. Ball is handed off, however, to Larry Jones. And Larry Jones is brought down by John Knudsen, the inside linebacker, junior from Great Falls, Montana, for Colorado. So there's a gain of a couple of yards, uh, which leaves them short of their first down. They'll be looking at third and about a yard and a half. Bill McCartney stood his mouth agape on the sidelines at the farm up in Palo Alto Saturday night. Couldn't believe that the game had gotten away from them. He's just one short of Fred Folsom's all-time coaching winning record of 77 games at CU. They'll run the ball for the first down as Bennett, number 33, hammers over the right side. And he got good support over there. There's the penalty flag with Terrell Green and Zev Lumelski. They're the right side of the line. Green 300, Zemelski about 301. The referee today is Wesley Ward. We told you it's an all Big East crew. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. The rest of the officials, the umpire is Rusty Spindell, Bristol Martin, the linesman, Dan Williams, line judge, Williamson, David Small, the field judge, Charles Phillips, the side judge, and the back judge is Gary Dantowitz. The contract specifically reads that Miami brings its own officials, and when Colorado goes back to Miami to finish this series, they will take big eight officials. It's a contract that was negotiated in the early 80s. Daniel Ferguson shows up in the backfield, number one, and immediately slips out to a wide spot as uh, Costa steps back from center, and they offer right out of a no back or a wide shotgun formation. The pass is completed to Jonathan Harris, the junior from Houston, and it's a pickup of about five or so. Now let's go to New York and John Saunders. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. We'll get back to you in just a moment. We want to get you updated in the SEC. LSU and Tennessee, not much of a contest here. Tennessee coming back off that loss to Florida. Great pass here as he sure hooks up with Craig Faulkner. He threw three on the day, 13 on the season now. Meanwhile, Tyrone Wheatley now has 32 career touchdowns. 35-7 there. Keith. All right, John, thank you. A couple of teams there that dug themselves in holes and got beat. Ninth play of this possession for Miami, opening possession. Bennett with a good run, broke a tackle, inside the 10, inside the 5, down at the 2, first and goal to go, Miami. The Miami 
Miami went to the two backs to try to run more. They couldn't do it. Now they go to one back, and now the running game is opening up. Dennis Erickson said that he's going to do the same thing from two backs, blocking-wise up front, as he does from one back. Big drive by Miami, first, uh, first drive of the game, first series of the game. They had a bit of a staggering start because of the uh, penalty and so forth, and uh, Colorado sacking the quarterback. But the Hurricanes have responded and have driven the ball down to the shadow of the goal line. Daniel Ferguson is hammered right at the line of scrimmage. And he was, I think Knutson was the, one of the guys who hit him, and number 92 is the other one. That'll be Shannon Clavel, a big sophomore from New Orleans, the nose tackle. When the two teams came on the field, they sort of blended into each other, and they got to talking a little bit. And these are two teams that like to talk. And the coaches had to get in there real quick with the whole hand yep. separated. Yep. They were just going for bragging rights. Bennett, number 33, is the deep man. Sweet right. Clavel grabs a hold of him. Can't hold him. In he goes. Touchdown, Miami. Shannon Clavel got a piece of him trying to chase him down, but a 270-pound nose tackle is not going to catch Donnell Bennett. Dane Pruitt is in for the extra point try. Mike Chrissy, the punter, will hold it. Here's a look at the touchdown. Just stretch him wide, stretch him wide, and, and Bennett sees a gap and gets up and through it. Kick is good. And so the Kings say, in your face, Buffalo. They lead it 7 to nothing. Receiver for Colorado on the kickoff return will be Michael Westbrook, number 81. He's one of the country's best wide receivers. Big guy, 6'4, 210. I mean, he can flat pull it. Kicking off will be Scott Barnwell, a 200 pound senior from Hollywood, Florida. Miami's in the white. The Hurricanes took the opening kickoff. Got a little staggering start. They went right on down the field for an 80 yard drive and stuck in the end zone. They lead seven to nothing, and now it's Colorado's turn as Westbrook gets back to the back of the end zone, makes the catch, and Miami will set up their defense for Colorado's vaunted offense out at the 20-yard line. And Colorado will open up with Cordell Stewart at quarterback. You can see that he has had a prolific career already, fourth in CU history, and he's got a year to go. The backs behind him will be Lamont Warren starting, but Michael Westbrook and Charles Johnson are the big story, each of them totaling over a thousand yards in receptions a year ago. They are indeed exciting football players. Johnson number nine, Westbrook 81. They run a double tight end offense and the ball to Lamont Warren, and Warren will get maybe a yard before Ray Lewis brings him down, and Ray Lewis is quite a story himself. Robert Bass got hurt, the middle linebacker. Lewis, a true freshman, just barely passed his SATs at the end of the summer session and steps in at 216 pounds. Last week, he had 12 tackles, and Bob, the defense, Tommy Tuberville says that I hardly miss anything when he's in there. He's a great athlete. He's probably a better athlete than Bass. He's just inexperienced. He was a strong safety a year ago in high school. Point second down, and still about 10. As Stewart fakes it, keeps it, rolls it out. He was an option quarterback coming to Colorado. Unloads the ball to Christian Fourier, the tight end, and Fourier will take it up for about a six, seven yard pickup. He's a 235 pound junior out of Northridge, California, a good tight end. The offensive front for Colorado, big enough, and uh, Relatively young, but still, this is the line I think that everybody, all of the coaches say, will grow and grow and mature. They all come back next year. Exactly, but if there's a weakness on this Colorado offense, it's the offensive line because all the skill areas are potentially big play people. It is third down and three. Goes to the ground, incomplete. It was Kenny Lopez, the defensive tackle, who got his uh, hand up and slapped it down. Miami lining up with Prime. Prime coming home. He's a native son of Colorado. The linebackers, Ray Lewis is in the middle. Rowan Marley is fun to watch. He's 5'8". We'll check 
the secondary for you later. Mitch Berger is in the punt. And he, like so many who have preceded him here at the University of Colorado, can really nail it. A lot of his punts this year have been pooch kicks because of the position down inside the 40-yard line. But this time he's got to move, hangs it up there, drifting under it and making the pick. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality cars in America for the past 10 years. By Lay's, America's favorite potato chips that you can't eat just one. By Domino's, where you always get great pizza plus something for nothing. And by Hitachi. Hitachi makes over 20,000 innovative products. So the Miami Hurricanes from the 17 now will go to work. into the stadium and the Colorado home crowd gets into it fast thrown down the middle intended for Chris T. Jones is too high he was open poor throw by Costa had time and he was open Miami coming into the game we said the story for them they needed some consistency on offense they certainly found it in the first drive both throwing and running from the one back set Larry Jones now brings the message in for the play. And it's second down and 10 from the 17. Larry Jones, the 235-pound junior from Gainesville. Giving the ball, split the right side, finds a hole, head down, and hammers away for a first down up to the 33-yard line. Finally wrestled out by Donnell Leomiti and Dennis Collier cornerback and a strong safety and moved the chains for the Canes. One of the problems against the Hurricanes have had is over here, let me get the line on here, they've been blitzing, but they saw it and they ran to the right side away from the blitz. Problem with Miami against Virginia Tech last week and Alabama last year against aggressive blitzing teams. That time they ran away from it. Three wideouts to the bottom of the picture. Spread the defense to Colorado. Costa checks off, turns, gives the ball to his running back. Donnell Bennett is consumed with the black shirt short of the line of scrimmage. Darius Holland was the first man to make contact with him. A junior out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. He's 285 pounds, so when he arrived, Donnell knew it. The Colorado defense was carved up by the Stanford Cardinal last week. Miami is in the first possession today, did it? So this Colorado defense team lost six players to graduation, and five of them are in the NFL right now. A couple of high draft choices. They've had to rebuild. Look at them. They're up there showing nine men along the defensive front. Now 10. And timeout on second down and 11. Frank Costa says, whoa, I need some conversation with the boss. Time out. 33-yard line, uh, and it's second down and 11. Larry Jones, a single back, three wide out. Costa gives it to Jones. Jones is hit by Darius Holland as he goes by and will get it back near the 35. Right here, let's pause five seconds so our ABC stations can tell you who they are. This is WFTV, Channel 9, Orlando. Six minutes and 45 seconds remaining to play in the first quarter. Miami's leading with Boone Pickett, the backup middle linebacker. Good news, good news for him, just a sprained knee. They say he may be back in the ballgame. They'd really be in trouble without him because he, there is nobody behind uh, Lewis now. Costa steps away from the pressure but can't get away from Holland. Darius Holland has his third tackle of the ball game. Big loss. A 
think you can discern already that Frank Costa is not a nifty fellow shifting well, around under pressure. Defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz, that's one thing he wanted to do, get in his face, get pressure up the middle, and force Costa to move laterally. He's not real nimble back there. We may have some excitement here as Mike Chrissy gets ready to punt it to Charles Johnson. Tight spin for Chrissy. Johnson, who's a flyer, has it at the 37. for an eagle illegal block. No illegal block in the back on the return team. So it'll come back and here's John Saunders in New York. Keith Alabama quarterback Jay Keith, Alabama quarterback Jay Barker had to leave the game with a strained stomach muscle. So Brian Bergdorf, his replacement, comes in 45 yards to David Palmer. 35-0, they lead Louisiana Tech. Keith, back to you. All right, watch to the left side of your screen, push in the back. Right up there, top left. That's it, right there. We mentioned that Colorado needed some big plays to win this ball game. That was the first, but it was wiped out by that illegal block in the back above the waist. 38-yard punt, 15-yard return, 10-yard penalty. First down. Colorado Buffaloes at their own 42-yard line. Cordell Stewart gives the ball to Warren. Lamont Warren, a junior out of Inglewood, California. And he picks up about four yards on the play. Warren plays quite a bit. Lachman uh, Salam played quite a bit against Stanford. Number 52 is the freshman linebacker who has been at Miami just a little over a month. Fights off the block and has the speed to get over there. The Miami defense stops you from the inside out. They don't want you to run. They bounce everything out and allow for their speed at linebacker to run it down. Second down and six. Lamont Warren carries again. He's to midfield, and he is two yards short of his first down. It was Warren Sapp, a 290-pound sophomore from Plymouth, Florida, that made the tackle. The game plan for Colorado offensively early on was to run inside, force the uh, Miami defense to stop the run inside before they go outside, make the safeties of Miami's defense come up and make some tackles. James Hill checks in at fullback now on third down and two. Give the ball to Salam Rachman Salam, and uh, he's not going to get the first down. I mean, the Canes ate him up. Loss on the play to the 49 of Colorado. It's fourth down and the long three, and they'll have to punt it. So Colorado tries to muscle up and run the ball against the Hurricanes, and it didn't work. Jonathan Harris, number three, is back waiting for the punt from Mitch Berger. Berger's first kick was a 50-yarder. Seven to nothing. Miami leads with 3.45 to go in the first quarter. High kick into the end zone. No return. It's beyond the field of play. And Miami once again will be out around the 20-yard line after a 50-yard punt by Mitch Berger. We told you a little while ago that Darren Krein was coming home for the uh, Miami Hurricanes, being a native son of the state of Colorado. He's from Aurora, which is not far in there, right in the Denver area here. He and uh, Patrick make up a formidable pair of defensive ends. Ron Wolfer and Sam Rogers ain't bad for Colorado either. It's first down for Miami now. Third possession, hands the ball to the running back, and the Buffalo stopped that one in a hurry, and once again, it's Darius Holland down around the bottom of the pile. Donnell Bennett and Larry Jones are about the same size. They're both juniors. But the running game has not been all that much for Miami in recent times because of the 
great effectiveness of the passing game. It was Donnell Bennett, though, that stepped up last year at the Penn State game, up at State College, and did a lot of heavy work to save that game for him. Daniel Ferguson checks in now. He's the speech of the bunch of sophomore, number one. We've got Larry Jones in motion. Foster with time down the middle. Through a bullet. Through a bullet that Sia Asayo Sai Tucker couldn't hang on to. The big sophomore out of Oklahoma City. One of the Buffaloes passed right in front of him. Dwayne Just Davis. the ball arrived. Dwayne Davis, the free safety, almost picked that ball off. And I think because it was thrown so hard, not only could Tucker not catch it, but Davis said, hey, I don't see him this hard in practice. It was a hummer, wasn't it? gets it away and it is incomplete. You had two Miami receivers run together. Somebody made a mistake. Saeed Tucker and Jonathan Harris literally ran together. And that buggered up the whole play. Well, it was tight man-to-man -man coverage with a safety deep free and because of the tight coverage it jammed the receivers and they couldn't get where they wanted to go. Good defense by Colorado. And in the punt is Mike Chrissy with Charles Johnson going back. Last time Johnson got his hands on it. He woke up the home folks. Let's see what he does here. There's some pressure on Chrissy, but he gets it out. And it's very high kick. Good coverage. And Johnson does the smart thing. Calls fair catch at the 39-yard line. A 41-yard return. A kick with no return. Toronto looks to be just about with a full clamp on things in the American League East. But uh, Philadelphia leading Atlanta at the bottom of the third. The Giants won last night. I hope Robbie Thompson's going to be all right. He got hit in the face last night with a pitch and has a cracked cheekbone. The National League West is only a game and a half. Defensively, Keith, that's what they've done this year. No points in the first three quarters against this defense of Miami. Now, Sean Salon in the backfield, comes in motion to the near side, and Cordell Stewart throws, bounces the ball to Johnson. Charles Johnson, who has become something of a celebrity because of a very difficult background, but has become quite a remarkable personality in the state of Colorado, and as his story spreads around the country, I think a lot of people will find him to be quite a remarkable young man. Not only all of that, but... Uh... He walks his girlfriend to class each morning. He's graduated in three years himself. But girlfriend is a, a sprinter on the track team, too, I believe, Keith. And Denise and John, he just makes sure she gets there. <laughs> Don't blame him. Washington Salon, big man around the left side. This is a tough running back, 6'1", 210, a sophomore out of San Diego. He's one of those leaners. He's always going forward. And he's very strong. And he ran through the block of middle linebacker Ray Lewis. Picked up nine yards on the carry. They're going to try and take some of the pressure off of Lewis. The middle linebacker for Miami usually makes the defensive call. Find the tight end. Is it right or left? Straight right or left? But they're going to give him some help because of all of his other responsibilities today. You have Hill now lining up with Salam in the backfield for Colorado. Third down and one. Salam gets the ball, gets the first down. He does move the pile, doesn't he? Next Saturday, ABC Sports presents a college football doubleheader beginning at 12 noon Eastern. In game one, we'll have regional action featuring some of the nation's top teams. Check for the game on your ABC station and for games available on pay-per-view. National telecast at 3.30 Eastern. Two legends, Lou Holtz and Bill Waltz as Notre Dame comes west to play Stanford next Saturday on ABC Sports. Salam is the single back for Colorado. Stewart keeps it, gets his pass away. Drill to Korea, and uh, he makes the catch. Fourier, I guess is the way he wants it pronounced, down around the 36-yard line and a first down. Well, if you notice, Colorado offensively is not going to their outstanding wide receivers. Johnson and Westbrook, they're running the ball, and they're going to their tight end. That's because Miami 
They want, first of all, to shut down the two wide receivers. Tommy Tuberville says that if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us by not using your wide receivers. We're doubling them, taking them out of the ball game. 1.45 to go in the first quarter. Stewart hands the ball to Salam. He bangs into a defender. Goes down to the 30-yard line. Getting up kind of slowly is C.J. Richardson, the strong safety. There was a pretty good collision when those two hit. There's a look at the blocking on that offensive line. Crying 91. 87 is Ford. These defensive ends of Miami want to rush the passer. Crying and Patrick, they love to rush the passer. What Elliot Uzelak said, the offensive coordinator says, we want to frustrate him and run inside of him. That's fine if he gets the running game going. Taken down and four. Stewart back, he's coming, passes away. Pass is incomplete, intended for Charles Johnson. And C.J. Richardson was aiming for it, couldn't quite get it. And Corwin Francis decked Stewart just as he threw the ball. Now let's join Jack Aroot. Keith, you know, Miami Hurricanes lost some of their key linebackers from last year, Armstead Smith, and of course they went on with Michael Barrow into the NFL. So the new set of linebackers complete with that true freshman. They've developed a special t-shirt. They go by a new nickname. They're simply known as the Who. They say nobody knows us, so that's our nickname. Who are those guys? Give them time. Give them about six weeks. Stewart. Penalty flag goes down as he picks up the first down. Look out for Flip for the block here. Flip, Flip Yep. On the offense. So, Coach Mack looks out on the field and once again sees his team make a costly mistake. Here's what they want to do. The offensive guard right here watches. He pulls around and gets the block on the linebacker. Instead of going, they call this the horn block. He goes around. It's all man blocking. Man to man blocking. Nine with a nice play. Wiped out by the clip. Man blocking. Well, the Colorado coaches think it may be the wave of the future. The thing that will be coming along. And you'll see the guards lined up a little bit deeper right next to the center so they can pull around the tackles and get those linebackers instead of going straight through they go around a lot third down and 15 as the ball comes back to the 41 Stewart gets some pressure from Klein takes off he's not timid about running the ball I told you he was uh, an option quarterback when he came here from Marrero, Louisiana Brought down by Kenny Lopez and Rowan Marley. You can't miss Rowan. He's a 5'8 bundle of dynamite wearing number two. So we're coming down to the end of the first quarter of play. Miami leading by a score of seven to nothing. Game being played in Boulder, Colorado. Keep they call timeout very quickly. One to keep the win behind Berger. Keep this in mind uh, that nobody has scored a touchdown on this Miami Hurricane defense since 1991 passing and 1990 rushing and Colorado is not going to either. It'll be a 50 Three, 54 yard field goal try. 54 yards. By Mitch Berger, Duke Tobin will hold it. Fifty-four yard field goal to start the second quarter of play. Jonathan Harris, number three, 
is the deep man for Mitch Berger's kickoff. Dexter Siegler is back there with him. They like Harris to have it because either one of them can burn you. Seven to three ball game and Berger will have none of it. He almost kicked that thing into the stand. See, so have helium in that ball or something or what? <laughs> Mile high. That's for the first quarter. Take a look. Almost, uh, you look, think of them, and you'd think they're about even. But look at the first downs. Colorado has only two. They only went, had two first downs and kicked a field goal. They had the ball three times. So really, the stats are pretty even. But Miami really dominated the first quarter. We have a change in Sebastian Ivis, I understand, too, right? Yeah, he's a... Uh, we got three of them replacing the old one. <laughs> Ruth, Mr. Ruth is gone. John Ruth. Ruth is now with the Marlins. Right. On first down, Costa has some time, has a man open. Tellison. Tellison splits him, gets a first down at the 31 yard line. Number 46 is over there in a hurry, Ted Johnson, but he could not prevent Tellison getting across the 30 yard line. That's what that one back uh, three wide outs will do for you. It well, spreads the defense. Exactly. And talking with Erickson this week, Keith, he said that's what I should have done last week against Virginia Tech when they were blitzing me. I was in two backs. Everybody was all lined up in the middle and they were blitzing. I should have spread them out and went to the one back three wide and threw on it. Larry Jones, the single back. Hurricanes leading 7-3, second quarter of play. Jones has the ball going around the corner. Picks up about three yards before he tumbles into the crowd over there. Dwayne Davis getting the push out of bounds. The stadium, Folsom Field, holds about 55,000. There are a few more than that here today. Not the biggest stadium uh, in the world, but it's picturesque. Been here a long time and is always seemingly filled with faithful. Bennett lines up now in the backfield. Second down and four. Up the middle goes Bennett. And along for the ride is number 16, Matt Russell. A freshman out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. And they look at it, and he's a yard short of the first down. So send in Jones with the play. Third and a long one on a day where the temperature is about 75 degrees. And they play on the rug here. And there is a piece of disturbing news that came to me about the state of Colorado yesterday. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Give the ball to Bennett. There's your first down and then some as Donnell gets across the 45. But I heard yesterday, and it was documented later in the news, Bob, that people now outnumber cattle and sheep in the state of Colorado, and I find that terribly depressing. <laughs> By one, right? I saw a picture of a baby on the news. And where are all the people coming from? California. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd get that in somewhere. <laughs> I always thought of this as a place of pristine water, fresh air. First down and 10, just across the 45. Here's Donnell Bennett searching, and he was a half a step for breaking loose for what could have been a big game, but Matt Russell wouldn't turn him loose. And Matt dragged him down. This is one of those places where Southern teams and Eastern teams and sometimes California teams come to play. And about the middle of the fourth quarter, your hip pocket weighs about 400 pounds because the air is thin. But Dennis Erickson said, had a comment about that a little earlier in the week. He says, you know, it's, it's his experience that in this altitude, good teams win, play well, bad teams lose and don't play well. Larry Jones is back in. Single back. Costa, Costa. Russell Tanker throws it away. That Russell almost got Frank Costa. The pass was off the hands of A.C. Tellison. Here's John. 
Okay, he's in the Pac-10, Arizona and Oregon State. Dan White back to pass, spots a wide open. Troy Dickey, touchdown, 7-0 right now. Arizona has the lead. Keith, back to you. Yeah, Wildcats can't score much, it seems, but some defense. Ooh, defense Costa. outscores the other, de <laughs> other teams themselves. <laughs> Costa is now one of his last five passes. Third down and nine. Crowd into it. Underneath. Close. Bends on the mark. And they're going to mark him short. They'll mark him short of the 45. He had to go beyond the 45 on the Colorado side to get the first down. Tight coverage. That's the free safety Davis who has played some corner in the past. And he's going to be just short, but they're using the philosophy that other teams have used in beating Miami. They're going to go for it. And that is tight man-to-man -man in, the, in the secondary and a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Marcus Wimbley, the man who made the catch. We've got Bennett and Jones both in the backfield now. Bennett is the deep man. There's your first down. Breaks the tackle. He's gone. No flags. Touchdown, Miami. That is a fourth down and a half yard call and good for a 45 yard touchdown because Donnell Bennett simply ran right through people. How many times do you see it? It's going to be a simple play right here. He's going to go over this side. The man he breaks the tackle is right here, the safety. How many times do you see it in the last line of defense? Short yardage play. If you break the one tackle at the line of scrimmage, you'll go all the way. Kick is up by Pruitt and good. Donnell Bennett has 10 carries, 90 yards, and a touchdown. And the Miami Hurricanes lead 14 to 3. <laughs> scoring drive the Miami Hurricanes have had here in this first half to lead by 14 to 3 and now they'll kick off to the Colorado Buffaloes with Michael Westbrook the deep man to receive the kick Westbrook watched the last one go over his head and the back of the end zone let's see what uh, that's gone to so Barnwell's got a big leg. Bill McCartney now will send out a double tight end, double wide offense that I talked to him about yesterday, including man blocking and whether or not this is an offense for the future. I think that it's a legitimate um, offense for today, particularly against a team like Miami that has the ability to put so much pressure on you. When we line up on the line, we have four receivers within a line, a yard of the line of scrimmage. But we're in a legitimate running formation every time. And that thread of run and pass uh, gives us integrity on offense. Penalty flag thrown as the ball is snapped to Cordell Stewart. And I think uh, Poirier, uh, one of the tight ends, jumped. In the last uh, five or six years, he has tinkered with his offense going back and forth. Colorado used to be a run-only offense, and then he went to a three-wide receiver, one back, and threw the ball. Last year, they were uh, tops in the country in the top ten throwing. They were like 90th running, 100th running the football. Now he's got more balance. He's rushed for over 200 every game, and he's thrown for over 200 in each of the first three games. Like that embryo, not for EA. Penalties now on the Buffaloes, five for 50 yards. They're hurting themselves. Back goes Stewart. No pressure on him. He swings the pass out. That's caught by Fourier. And Christian is hammered just short of the 20-yard line. Well, the penalty had backed them up. And they're looking for the 19-yard line now. Fourier is uh, st stumbling, and uh, they better call time out and get him out of there. He is a tough kid. An outstanding tight end. Not only a good receiver, he's got great hands and also a very good blocker. And he had to come out, didn't he? He was really good. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Very good. 
Good Westbrook, catch. Uh, Westbrook hasn't good seen good the ball good. yet under a pass. That hit is by number two, Rohan Marley, one of the smallest men on the field at linebacker. Cordell Stewart. That may have been a quarterback draw. Whatever it was, it didn't work for much because Ray Lewis was all over it. So the Miami defense. One truth about playing Miami, you will not play them sideline, side uh, running sideways. Well, go straight out the object is the, to go run right at it. The first three games, they've gained over 500 yards in each game. Today, after three possessions, they've gained 57. Lamont Warren is now in there in the single back. Cordell Stewart's got some room. He'll pick up the first down. So Stewart with a 6 foot 3 inch, 210 pound junior from Marrero, Louisiana, ambles on down the sideline and gets the first down for the Buffalo. Well, that's like a quarterback draw. It wasn't. It was a pass, but there was man coverage in the secondary, and all the defensive players were running with the receivers. Cordell just saw it. Big gap opened up, and he ran for a first down. I wonder how many folks are watching in Solomon Dole's barbershop down in Marrero today. <laughs> that's where Stewart and Miami's defensive tackle Pat Riley used to hang out when they played high school in football down in Marrero. All is handed to Salam, the sophomore out of San Diego, and he'll pick up about two or three yards on that carry. And bring up second down and seven. Keith, we're, we're, we're well into the second quarter, and neither of McCartney's wide receivers, either Johnson, who is an outstanding player, or Westbrook, have touched the football. I have got a pass. They, Westbrook caught a punt, but the uh, point is that they're not getting the ball to the outside. Aurier's had all of the catches. Marley was after the quarterback, Stewart, and had him in his sights. He'd gotten away clean, but Siegler was over there all over Johnson, and the pass was a little bit off the mark, and it goes incomplete. And as we mentioned, the reason that Cordell Stewart cannot get the ball to the wide receivers is big play people, as Miami is double covering the outside, taking away the explosive guys, forcing Colorado to do it the slow way. P.J. Cunningham is in the ball game for the Buffaloes. He's got a little shorter pass to Salon. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, and gets up to the 47-yard line and dumps the first down. Besides what we were just talking about, here are the two wide, to the backs out here covering the receiver on this side. The other receiver on this side, again covered by these two defensive backs. As the ball is snapped. They're going to take away the two wide receivers and force him to go to somebody else. Salam gets the first down up at the 47-yard line for the Buffaloes. Give it to him again. Again, ran through a tackle. But he can't get away from number six for the Canes, Terrace Harris, a redshirt senior, free safety. Tomorrow here on ABC Sports, Senior Tours, big stars on the links down in Georgia. Golf's legendary names playing for nearly a half million bucks in prize money in the final round of the nationwide championship. Live coverage at 4 Eastern, 3 Central on ABC Sports. They're in the third round today. And when last we heard, Lee Trevino had the lead. That must mean it's big bucks on the table. A merry mix. A merry mix. Lee Buck Trevino gets hard and tough when there's a pile of money on the table. Cordell Stewart's pass is incomplete. That's got to be a penalty. Ray Lewis hit Garrett Ford well out of bounds. Well out of bounds. I mean, he was in pursuit of him, went into the Miami sidelines, and I'm sure he didn't see the sidelines. But nonetheless, it has to be a call. We'll play action. Stewart outside the pocket. Smart move. Throws it poorly. No question about that call. The young freshman just hitting a little bit too late. He had no idea where the ball was. It was a defensive back, a strong safety in uh, high school. He's used to covering tight ends. Well, Keith, good news on the condition of Christian Fourier. He had his bell rung. Here's how it happened. His head was snapped back. 
and the helmet snapped in the back base of his neck. The doctors have checked him out. They're going to keep him out for a series or so, and then they're going to clear him to play again. That's scary. A little Marley, the, the small linebacker, is the guy that did it. 14 to 3, Miami leads. First down for the Buffalo. Stewart goes deep. It is incomplete. Pass intended for Garrett Ford right down the pipe. And Terrace Harris almost came out of there with it. So Stewart threw it in traffic. Threw it to the right. They're trying to go the right place. That was the tight end down the middle of the field. Their best uh, tight end, Fourier, uh, Jack just talked about being on the sideline. And uh, they've got to go to uh, some other people to get the ball to uh, to the tight ends in the backs to get the double coverage away from the outside. Charles Johnson has been taken out for just a moment. And the coaches are talking to him, so they're plotting something with Johnson as Stewart gives the ball to Salam. And Salam runs the ball to the 20. And that's a pick up of five yards with Dwayne Johnson and Ray Lewis making the tackle. Now here comes Johnson back, and he's got to play. So let's see what they've decided to try here. Keith, if they put both wide receivers, Johnson and Westbrook, on the same side, it's tough to double both of them. If you put them on right and left sides, they can double it. Well, they've got them on the other side. Yeah. Johnson at the bottom of the picture and Westbrook at the top. He's looking for Johnson. He goes instead to Salon. Salon got away. Going to get a first down. And goes out of bounds. Down around the 11 yard line. Corwin Francis could not run him down. Francis had him out there in the open field and Salon got away from him. Well, they're doing the right thing. They can't get the ball to the outside, so they're throwing to their tight ends and their backs. And Salam came in with only two receptions on the year. They're going to have to throw some more to their backs. Fourier is back in the lineup for Colorado. Lamont Warren checks back into the backfield. It's first down at the 11 yard line of Miami. Colorado threatening really for the first time today. Lamont Warren is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Kevin Patrick, number 86. Patrick holds on, gets some help, and they take him down effectively at just maybe a half a yard loss, no more than that. Patrick is quick. Watch him on the inside right here. He's just going to step to the inside and make the play. Just too quick. Miami defense, a lot of times they'll slant inside, they'll slant outside. You never know where they're going. This is the 13th play of this possession. Stewart on second down, throws the ball to Warren, penalty flag to Stone. Warren is knocked out of bounds at the one yard line. That looks to the flag back up to you. Patrick, Kevin Patrick was involved with one of the Buffaloes, and uh, Colorado absorbs another penalty. And Lewis, the middle linebacker for Miami, is down. That is a hold call back around the 23-yard line. The concern now is for Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker. There is no depth there. He is the only healthy one because Boone Pickett came out of the ball game a little while ago with a twisted knee. In penalties, Colorado has six in this ball game. They had 20 coming into the game. They had eight fumbles and six interceptions, so they have been killing themselves, and now they're going to have to eat a 22-yard penalty. And Left side, Ray Lewis, 52. Right there, his foot was planted. And he's dragging the left leg as he comes off the field. Take, give you a little history, middle linebacker for Miami. Michael Barrow last year, second round draft choice, graduated. Robert Bass, the backup, was hurt uh, in the game last week. Then Lewis comes on. Lewis was playing today, and his backup, Pickett, was hurt on special teams. So Miami now has gone through three middle linebackers this year in the addition of Barrow last year. The thing they'd have to do, Keith, is bring in one of the outside linebackers well, to play James, inside. James Burgess. Yeah. Number 54, Booker Pickett uh, did not go in. So Booker Pickett did not go on the field having suffered the sprained knee. There's some pretty good linebackers, all who graduated and all who are in the NFL. 
Colorado backs up on a 22-yard call. It's a foul from the point of the infraction, the point of foul. Warren Sett slaps that ball down as Stewart tried to get a pass away. And now Colorado is going the other way. When it looked like they had a chance to score a touchdown with a first down on the Miami 11. So big Warren Sapp after that Herculean effort will get a moment to take a deep breath. Well, you know, Krein and Patrick, the ends get all the attention, but that Warren Sapp on the inside, you talk to offensive line coaches and coordinators, they'll say that Sapp is the guy they're most concerned about. The ball rests back at the 34-yard line. Colorado hit with 73 yards in penalties today. Stewart throws the ball out to Salon. Pretty good collision down there as Salam, Siegler, and Burgess all collide. But it brings up a fourth down. And it should get uh, Berger into the ball game, and he's probably bringing a kicking tee. Well, there is no tee in his literal sense. But he's at the 31 yard line for a 41 yard field goal try. The man holding is Duke Tobin. The Colorado Buffaloes have 15 plays in that possession. They get a first down at the 11-yard line. They come away empty. No points. Well, the penalty is what really cost them, and that'll do it to you every time. Turnovers and penalties. They were down in their good, but the penalty moved them back. And Miami has its best starting point on the ball game as Pennant does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Cannon Clavel led the defensive surge for Colorado. And it would seem to me that if there is going to be a change in, in the ball game, momentum or control is going to have to come from the Colorado defense. So look at the AP top 10 today. Florida State is not playing. Notre Dame is tied. Colorado, incidentally, is 13th in the AP poll this week after the loss. Second down at about 12. Little quick pop on the knees, nothing doing. Ball is caught by Jamie German, the uh, freshman uh, flanker, but uh, Colorado ate him up for a more loss back inside the 20 to the 18. Here's Jack. We'll keep some good news on the condition of Ray Lewis. Dr. John Uribe, the orthopedic surgeon for the Hurricanes, checked him over. His left knee was the concern. They do not think anything critical has happened there. They say they are going to clear him to return to play. The same cannot be said for Booker Pickett, though. After the initial diagnosis, they've looked further. They feel he may have torn a ligament. Oops. Oh, Third down and 16. Costa back, gets the pass away under pressure, thrown to the ground just as he released the ball and the pass is incomplete. Now the Colorado defense may have done something for their offense because they have held the and they pushed him back six yards and now Chrissy comes in to punt. Let's see what Charles Johnson can do with a return. It already clearly established it was not going to be the Colorado offense that was going to turn this thing. It's going to have to be the Buffalo defense. Chrissy's punt is out of there. Not all that good. Depends on the roll. It does not take a very good roll for Miami. Keeps on bouncing, however, and now does kick on down to about the 36-yard line of Colorado. There are the Buffaloes. will have it. It winds up a 46-yard punt. Vance Joseph has come in in relief of him, and we'll wait and see what the problem is. The linebackers for Miami now to sort that out. James Burgess joins Rowan Marley and uh, Corwin Francis. Ray Lewis not back in as yet. Ball is handed off by Joseph to the running back, Lamont Warren. Warren uh, barely gets to the line of scrimmage of that. The attitude defensively now, Keith, for Miami is not only 
are we shutting down the wide receivers? The wide receivers have not caught a ball. The tight end has caught four. The running backs have caught three. Now we have the backup quarterback. He was recruited as a wishbone running style quarterback. So Stewart was also. So now even more, they're going to play the run and not the pass. Stewart, we're told, has what they feel is a minor concussion. They're going to set it down for a bit. Joseph's pass is away. The pass is completed to Westbrook. Michael Westbrook, big man. 6-4, almost wrestle free. And it's a first down for Colorado. Vance Joseph is a good quarterback. He, too, is from Marrero, Louisiana. That's the first completion to a wide receiver today. Westbrook caught uh, over over a thousand yards in passes last year. 76 passes Westbrook caught last year. 1,060 yards and eight touchdowns. Ball is on the 42-yard line. Joseph rolls it out, lets it go, zip on it. Pass good to Charles Johnson. One man misses. Johnson is down to the 28-yard line, and that's another first down for Colorado. So Vance Joseph has come in and electrified the Bills Stadium. He's moving the team. How do you explain the backup quarterback coming in and doing something that the starting quarterback couldn't do? There's no pressure on this young man. He wasn't thinking he was going to play. Just going in there. He's got everything gained, nothing to lose, and he's just playing really loose and free. Ball is handed off to Lamont Warren. Rowan Marley rolling along the ground gets in his way and then Ray Lewis who had just come back into the ball game brought him down. Marley is number two. He's only 5'8". Two guys block him. Look at him. <laughs> he is something. <laughs> he plays with reckless abandon. He has to. He's only 5'8", 200 pounds like a bouncing ball. Second down and five. This is Salam to the 20. And at least two yards short of a first down, about two and a half. So they'll be looking at third down. What happens when your starting quarterback goes out and your second stream come in? The rest of the team kind of picks it up also. The line blocks a little harder. The receivers run a little better. And the uh, running backs say, all right, we've got to break tackles and do something because everybody else now has got to do a little more. Third down and two. Salam is the man in motion. Joseph rolls out, hit from Kevin Patrick, defensive end, looping, got it clean. Eighty-six. It's a blitz. Marley, the linebacker, comes. The tackle doesn't see. That's Birdie, number fifty, and Patrick and Crime from the other side have a meeting. And Berger is in for a field goal try. From the 34, it's a 44-yard field goal try. He has hit one from 54. But he's got a little bit of wind in his face on this one. Got it. 54 and 44, and Colorado has six points. With a minute and 51 seconds to play in the first half. Colorado has six, but Miami has 14. of two 80-yard drives for the score. That's a great drive by Colorado, especially considering that Cordell Stewart was not in there on the drive, the backup quarterback. And this is a tough situation, Keith. They're checking to see if he remembers the plays, remembers where he's at. If he's got a true concussion with some loss of memory, he'll be out the whole ballgame. And Joseph, however, looked very effective for the moment until uh, the number two quarterback, Coy Detmer, is uh, redshirting this year. Uh, he's a uh, school was hurt last year. Detmer came on and played very well as a true freshman. They've decided to redshirt Detmer. So uh, I doubt if we'll see him. Uh, they want to save him because he's, uh, he's 
physically they want him to develop just a little bit. He's the younger brother of Ty Detmer. And every coach on this staff at Colorado say that Coy is going to be a dandy. Well, he's got the style that they're looking for. I mean, they're, if, they're, if they're going to be a, a passing team and not an option team, you want somebody to drop back and throw and read coverage. All right, Jonathan Harris is the deep man waiting for Mitch Berger to kick it. 14 to 6 ball game with 151 to go in the first half. Jamie German is also back there in case he's needed, but he won't be needed because Berger has just kicked it into the cheap seats. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll choose an MVP from each team for the Chevrolet scholarship program in its 23rd year this year. Donating $1,000 to each of the players with university. 23 years. Ball is on the 20. Larry Jones, the single back. Let's see if Miami keeps pumping away or if they'll run out the clock. Nope, Custer. They pull the trigger. Underneath, Jones out of the backfield, about a two, three yard pickup. John Knutson on the tackle. John Knutson, kind of an interesting story. He's got bad feet. I mean, he's got he's got flat feet. Virtually no I has to wear a brace to keep his foot up. The arches are, are so poor, so weak. Sometimes he pops them up. That pass is thrown hard to the sidelines by Costell. And the pass is completed to Christine Jones. And there's a penalty flag on this side of the field. Miami holding. Illegal formation. Nope, illegal for the formation. And holding on the offense. Well, they do hold it, too. They've got to get them both. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw the holding. Bill McCartney's team has been outstanding on offense, but pathetic defensively. They came in the second number ranked, second team in the nation offensively, and number 90 in the nation defensively, allowing 25 points per game and over 300 yards passing per game. Second down and 20. Ball is back on the 10. A minute and 22 to play. That was a 13-yard holding penalty, penalized from the point of the foul. Danielle Ferguson lines up in the backfield now for Miami. Has the ball. Has a little daylight. Gets out to the 18-yard line before he is pulled out by number 92, Shannon Clavel. Timeout is called by Colorado. So that's, they have one, one remaining. It'll be third down and 17, 18 yards to go for Miami with a minute to play. They lead 14 to six, Boulder, Colorado, Folsom Field, number three, Miami. They have not scored a lot of points in uh, the first two games. They've moved the ball around quite a bit. Prior to this game, they were inside the 29 times, scored only five times. That's not a very good percentage. Not for a team ranked third in the country. Well, that's right. And, and, and offensively, they should have not been ranked third in the country. They've been struggling offensively, looking for an identity. They were going two backs and one back. Strange that they go to one back and the running game goes. That's because you spread everybody out and there's more holes there. You take the linebackers with you when you spread out. Third and 12. with a lot of time. Throws pass caught at the 35-yard line. Big play there for Miami. Dalton Simmons is squawking about it as Chris Jones, 6'4", 210, big target, got the size advantage on Simmons and made the catch. Best thing that Costa does here is steps up in the pocket. He's got plenty of time, only four guys rushing. This is a deep out, and that picks up the first down. It's his uh, foot down. You get knocked out and you don't get your foot down, and still it's not a catch, but you have to get your foot down. Costa goes down the middle, passes roll to Dietrich Clausel. Wasn't it Dietrich Clausel who made the big catch to win the Amazon game a year ago? 
and I it was almost right. that kind of a catch, laying down and on his elbow. Well, you got a pretty good memory. How do you remember all that stuff? I don't have any idea. <laughs> Seven different receivers now have caught balls for Miami. And here's Jack Aruka. Keith, I got a trivia question for you. Do you know what this is? That's my old slingshot. <laughs> no, not really. Back in 1908, they used these for nose guards for football players because they didn't have face masks. Mike Hankowitz received this from his sister-in-law back in the early 70s. He didn't know what it was, so what he did is he started an antique football collection. Now get this. He's got incredible things now. He's got over 30 leather helmets, an assortment of old-time shin guards, pants, jerseys, and it is just about probably one of the best collections that anybody has. He says, you don't get much time as a football coach to collect the modern stuff, so he goes for the old stuff. I'll save this for you. You might want to take it back to California with you. I wonder if he's got any of my teeth. My old Hank, teeth. Hank was there. And if, that, <laughs> if that's the nose guard they wore, I'm glad I didn't play back in 1908. Uh, and maybe it had multiple use. <laughs> stops with 29 seconds. Clock stopping as they move the chains. Once the chains are down, the referee winds the clock. There you go. seconds ago, Miami was backed up on their own 20, and Colorado called a timeout because they thought they were running the clock out. The extra point try by Pruitt is good. Costa in that possession, 5 of 5, 85 yards, and Miami now leads going into halftime by a score of 21 to 6. There's a look from behind. There's two receivers over there. The inside receiver breaks to the outside, and the corner that was covering Jones jumped on the outbreak by the inside receiver. Dennis Erickson said yesterday that Frank Costa has got to step up and be the man to take charge of the offense, to move the football team. In the first half, he has done it, and he has done done it at a time that is, I think, fortuitous for Miami. Well, this, that is when they go to the clubhouse. Well, th this offense, Miami's offense, lost nine starters. And when you lose nine starters, you lose a lot of leadership. And not only leadership, but you're changing styles. He was going to the two-back because he wanted to run more. They've thrown the two-back out, at least for today. They've gone to the one-back, something that everybody feels comfortable with, especially Costa and the receivers. And things are smooth sailing for Miami offensively again here today. That is the third 80-yard drive of the first half of the Miami Hurricane. And we talked about needing consistency for Miami, the story of this ballgame. They certainly have had it. Scott Barnwell will kick it off. Michael Westbrook is waiting. Barnwell does not give him a chance. Next Saturday, college football on ABC Sports, doubleheader beginning noon Eastern, game one, regional action. Check your ABC station and uh, your local cable operator, and we have a huge fight going on down on the field right now. So let's go away from the promotion as both teams come storming onto the field. This is going to take a little time, I think, because they are really at it. I see number 57 in the middle of the melee for Miami. It's a good place for him to get out of there. Because he can get lost in there. That's Tom Patterson. The long stepper. And now they've started to separate. So a huge fight. 
tonight, and now it's breaking out again. This is about the fifth flag that has been thrown as a result of this. I don't, can't tell you exactly how it started, but it's one of the biggest fights that I've seen in some time in college football. Kevin Patrick here was mugged uh, down in the end zone and somehow got his helmet pulled off. And that is not a good thing to do either. This is just an ugly scene, Keith. You hate to see it at any level, professional high school, college. Just an ugly scene. And a lot of these things started with guys trying to break things out. Guys who come in later thought it was a fight and started jumping on them. He had only took the one, and then uh, everybody started trying to break it up, and suddenly there were two, and then three, and then four, and then five. It all then started, everybody. it all started, and the, the kick went into the end zone. Yep. It all started with somebody getting blocked up around the 30-yard line and being nailed into the ground. Then there was, everybody reacted to that, and it just built from there, built from there. serving their cause very well because they're coming strutting back to the bench showing off a little bit and calming the crowd see if we can find out well Antonio Coley was involved the uh, Miami player and I don't know who hit who first but uh, I think Coley was, was somewhere in there involved. Yeah, that was up around the 35-yard line after the ball went into the end zone. I think Coley might have been clipped and, and uh, might have taken exception to it. But there were about six flags thrown as the fight spilled all over that side of the field and both benches empty. Well, what do you do here if you're an official? You, you don't penalize anybody if you saw somebody flagrantly fighting, you can eject some people. Dennis Erickson got out there in the melee along with several of the Florida coaches. But it's not a very healthy place for uh, a relatively small coach to be getting out and, and uh, fight that size. I'll tell you, that the officials, they had a terrible time getting control of it. But without the coaching staffs, they wouldn't have. Miami's three touchdowns, Keith. Let's talk some football. Miami's three touchdowns all started on their own 20-yard line. They scored in 11 plays on their first possession. They scored in 11, eight plays in their fourth possession. And then on this last possession, six plays, 80 yards for the touchdown. Well, the officials, I don't think, have really defined what they plan to do. They're still huddled out there in the middle of the field. The Colorado team is over there ready uh, to go to work. But uh, Dennis Erickson has still got his people over here until he gets a declaration from the official. Well, I'm sure they're talking about ejections. Did, did, did anybody see uh, anything flagrant that should cause an ejection if anybody should be kicked out of the ballgame? Well, while they talk, let me continue with what's happening next week. You can see the Texas A&M and Texas Tech is one of the regional telecasts. That'll start at 12 noon Eastern. You can check your cable operator to see which games might be available on pay-per-view. The second game of the doubleheader is a national telecast, and it's Notre Dame at Stanford at 3.30 Eastern Time. So we'll be looking for you from the farm next week here on ABC Sports. Sure Notre, Notre, Notre Dame is still smarting from what Stanford and Bill Walsh did to them in South Bend last year. Dead ball, personal fouls against the defensive team. We have ejections on both teams. Well, who's ejected? They're going to kick some people out on both sides. Well, I agree with that. I really do. If, 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 if you're going to go out and, and break the rules, flagrantly break the rules, you got to you got to withhold, you got to withstand the punishment. And if it, with ejection is what it is, it'll stop you from fighting the next time. And there goes a the helmet. Why was that Westbrook? That's Westbrook. It looks like he may be out. He just threw his helmet, started walking off the field. So there's one of uh, Colorado's uh, 
out in wide receivers apparently ejected and not happy about it. We'll try to get the name. Kevin to Patrick may be one of them. I'm not from Miami. I don't know yet. It would help everybody if they'd give us an idea of who's being thrown out. So far, we haven't had a read. From the body English, it looks like Patrick is out because the defense is out, ready to go on the field, and Patrick is kind of firing them up. He doesn't have his helmet. Of course, he lost his helmet down there in the end zone, and I don't know if he ever got it back. I would say from the body language that he is out of the game. So that's Westbrook for Colorado and Patrick for Miami. The officials are still talking with the Miami people and the Colorado people. See, Patrick's down there in the end zone, and there are two or three Buffaloes after him. Yeah, he's uh, he's on the bottom there. It doesn't look like from this that he did anything, but you don't know what happened before that. There's Westbrook, number 81, just jumping on the pile. Well, we still don't know exactly who was ejected if it was more than just the two people we've talked about. We may have to do this by a process of elimination to see who is not in the lineup they would normally be in. They will tell us, they say, during halftime, because now they want to complete the first half of play. We've got 20 seconds remaining. Miami is leading 21 to 6. Colorado will get the football at the 20 yard line. They have one timeout remaining. Cordell Stewart is on the bench with what we're told is a minor concussion. And Westbrook having been ejected, so two very prominent figures in their offense are out of the contest. That means Vance Joseph is in at wide out. James Kidd should be the man who will replace uh, Westbrook. At the wideout, Kidd is a redshirt freshman from Elk Grove, California, so he should be the man joining Charles Johnson as the wideout. Now it's he's out there. No, it's T.J. Cunningham, number eight. Cunningham. They run it with Salon, and he's taken down after an eight-yard pickup at the 28-yard line. And the clock continues to run. They'll have to spend their time out. Well, the best thing that can happen now, Keith, is for the nine seconds to run off the clock and get into halftime and calm these two teams down. And remember that they have another half of football to play. The wind appears to be a little brisker than it was at the outset, judging from the flags around the rim of the stadium. They're whipping pretty good right now. So the Miami Hurricanes go 80 yards three times and lead 21 to 6 as we come toward halftime. Keith, the Hurricanes came in with a reputation being aggressive and really uh, being a tough physical team. And of course, Colorado says, oh, we, we're not afraid of these guys. We're going to stand up to them. Now, who does that affect the most? Is it, is it going to affect Miami? I don't think so. That's the way they play normally. They're on the road. They rise to the occasion. They've done this many times. Colorado playing at home, and they fire them up, too. You really can't tell until you see the rest of the game. Salam is the man in motion. Vance Joseph takes off. On a quarterback draw that didn't work, pouncing on him is Pat Riley, the defensive tackle, number 43 for Miami, and the half is over. So the two teams will go to the locker room to rewrap their hands for the second half. Here's our colleague, our trusted friend, our dinner companion. Look at this. <laughs> He's tried to hold him back. <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack, you got to lead him, not hold him back. Jack, turn him loose. Ah, uh, uh, the legs finally succumb. Uh, oh, boy. Jack Aruth has another moment of daring do. Well done, Jack. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> he survived it. That's about all we can say. As for Ralphie, back inside. <laughs> and we're ready for the second half kickoff as Miami will kick it to Colorado. Miami leads in the ball game by a score of 21 to 6. And we have the names of the players who were ejected, the 7 for Miami and 5 for Colorado. I'll give them to you as soon as I can. The kick is beyond the field of play. Colorado will start at the 20. The first half stats look like this. Total yardage is always an indicator. 241 for Miami, only 168. Colorado came in, remember, the second offensive team in the nation. Those numbers do not reflect the way they are used to playing. They came in averaging over 500 yards per game. Cordell Stewart is back in at quarterback for the Colorado Buffalo. So that gets a roar from the crowd. Salam is the running back. He's got the ball. Rashan gets up across the 22. And that'll just about do it. T.J. Cunningham is the wideout replacing Michael Westbrook, who was one of the five players from Colorado ejected in the big fight. The others were Dennis Collier, Jeff Bruner, Desmond Dennis, Westbrook, as we told you, and Jeff Blackman. Those are the players ejected for Colorado, from Colorado. I'll give you the Miami players after this play. It's second down and eight for the Buffaloes. Charles Johnson comes to the bottom of the picture. players that were ejected. Larry Jones running back, Dennis Scott, Kevin Brinkworth, Alan Simonet, Omar Andrus, Sai Tucker tied in, and Kenny Holmes. And not on that list is Kevin Patrick, who we thought before we went to the half was ejected, but he was in on that last sack, number 86, Kevin Patrick. The ball rests back near the 15, uh, no, back near the 10 yard line, where it is third down and about 19 for Colorado. The offense has not been on track today. And Cordell Stewart is hit by number 71, Kenny Lopez. Down he goes at the 15, and here's the game story. Well, we said coming into the ball game that certain teams had to do things. Miami needed offensive consistency, they've gotten that. They've got 104 yards rushing, 137 yards passing, three touchdowns and six possessions. Colorado needed big plays. Westbrook, who is now out of the game, only one reception. And Johnson, the other outstanding receiver, only one reception. And no big plays from the running back. Mitch Berger to punt. No pressure. Kick is out. Jonathan Harris back at the 43. Looking for some help from his friends and can't find any. He gets uh, up to the 44, one-yard return after a 43-yard punt, and Miami has very good field position. The offensive leaders for Miami, Costa, a good first half, one touchdown. Bennett led the uh, rushers, and Chris Jones with the receivers. Miami first half possessions they scored three touchdowns all 80 yard drives scored on their first possession their fourth and the last of the first half wind is swirling around down on the field Donnell Bennett is the single back Frank Costa had a very good first half for the hurricane ball goes to Bennett who had a huge first half including a touchdown this by four of Miami's best starting point of the ball game. Bennett just picked up three yards before Woolfork brought him down. Keith, I think the point needs to be made for those who are not familiar with the Hurricanes. This is the offense, the one back, three wide receivers that they've used in the four years that Dennis Erickson has been at Miami. 46 and four he's been. They've been fooling around with a two back offense trying to run the ball. They're not using that at all today. One back, and they're running the ball very well from the one back offense. And beating a tough team on the road. Foster getting heat. Pulls it down, and he's going to run it. And he gets out of bounds at midfield. As number 83, Dietrich Fawzell, throws a block. And uh, the officials jump all over it. He put the block on Darius Holland. And Holland knocked him down and it stood there. Probably said something, but the officials got him out of there. 
before he was beheaded. Keith, you mentioned the names of the players that were ejected, and I think that is good, and I think it needs to go a step further. If you're ejected, like basketball in college, if you're ejected from a game in football, you ought to be out the next week also. Put some teeth into it so these kids won't go out and fight the next time there's an opportunity. And if the single back crossed a little pop over the middle, and the pass is caught by Gerard Deafness, a redshirt freshman tight end, and he picks up a first down. So that's the first time we've seen that play today. Costas ended the first half with five straight completions and 85 yards in that last touchdown drive, and he starts off the second half with a still a hot hand. He's thrown to nine different receivers. Now, number 23, Larry Jones, who had been alternating and running back with Donnell Bennett, was one of those players ejected. He is not available. That means Danielle Ferguson, the speech, is going to have to play for it. He's got the ball right now. And he's got a first down as he goes to the Colorado 33-yard line. Dwayne Davis finally brought him down. Well, of the ejections, Miami loses two on the starting offense. Tucker, the tight end, and also Jones, uh, the fullback, who normally starts at two-back. But a lot of offensive backs for Miami. You see Ferguson probably with the most speed just outrun Knutson, number 36, and picks up a first down. Miami is deep at the running back position. A.C. Tellison, the six-foot-four wide receiver to the bottom of the picture. came into the day with two sacks on the season. Colorado having eight. That's what they need to do. Pressure the quarterback. Tight coverage. Costa needs to be able to see the blitz coming and if he can't avoid it, get rid of the ball and not take the sack. But this is only his third start of his career. Six, Ted Johnson. Costa's going to get hit from our right side. The outside linebacker right there. That's Rogers again, number 90, putting the pressure. Looks like the uh, at halftime, uh, Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, said let's go out and put some pressure on him, and they've done it the last couple of passes. Third down and 15. Could be another blitz. Passes away. He's got his man. It is touchdown. Miami Tullison. When you blitz, you leave your guys one on one. Right out here. He's going to run a deep route. Now watch the linebackers in here as you're going to blitz. They're going to be one-on-one -on -one with everybody. Simmons, the man that is covering Tellison, is replacing Hudson, who is not in the ball game because of injury. When you blitz, you leave your corners one-on-one. -on -one. Colorado blitzed successfully twice and got him. Miami got him on the third. The kick is good. And 10.07 to go in the third quarter. The Miami Hurricanes, third rank in the country. Beginning to look like it, they lead 28 to 6. And there's the man that held on to the football, even though the wind almost took it away from him. Uh, yes, AC, what is your say? <laughs> they put Miami up by a score of 28 to 6. And now the Kings will kick it off to the Buffalo. Scott Barnwell hasn't allowed anybody a chance to return it. James Kidd looks at it. He might have had a chance on that one, except he kicked it out of bounds. Have the option of taking it up at the 35 or making him kick it again, and most people take it at the 35. Tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central, the first romantic triangle for just two people. 
an all-new episode for one of the best new shows of the season, Dean Kane and Terry Hatcher, as Lois and Clark and the new adventures of Superman tomorrow night on ABC. They'll take it on the 35 and get on with it. Again, uh, Miami had seven players ejected from the ball game in the big fight. Key man in that ejection, two of them, I think, for Miami. Larry Jones running back and Saeed Tucker tight end. And uh, for Colorado, wide receiver Michael Westbrook in particular is going to be missed. And so will uh, Dennis Collier and Jeff Bruner. Boilermakers putting up a fight. Cordell Stewart coming off of a minor concussion throws that into the ground for an incomplete forward pass intended for Charles Johnson. Stewart in the first half was 7 of 13. Joseph did a nice job when he came in. Salam not getting a lot done rushing. And Salam, the running back, leads the receivers. And you know that's problems when you've got wide receivers. Here's the first half possessions. Field goals in the third and fifth possessions. And a missed field goal for Colorado. Option play. Didn't have any room. By the time he delivered the pitch to the trailing back, they had run out of real estate, and Ray Lewis was right in the middle of it. And so Salam was tumbled into the crowd. Even though they moved the hash mark out to a little better than six feet, he held on to the ball too long before he got rid of it. Defensive line. Watch the middle linebacker, 52 Lewis, unblocked. That's the problem with the Miami defense. Even though he doesn't make a play, knocks one of the spectators out of the way, but the defensive line doesn't allow the offense to get to the linebackers. They can run and make the plays. Third down and nine. Patrick's after him. The pass is behind the intended receiver, Charles Johnson. Johnson had double coverage. Westbrook is gone, making things a little easier for the Canes defense. Mitch Berger is coming onto the field to punt on fourth and nine. And Jamie German is going deep now. The true freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. There he is, number seven. And I mean, he can run. Didn't get all of it. Didn't get a spiral on it. German turns and he runs into a house full of black shirts. Not good judgment by the freshman. He gave up about 10 yards looking for room to run. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And by Energizer brand batteries. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going, 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 going. Here comes Miami now from the 12-yard line. Costa, 13 out of 19, 183 yards and two touchdowns, and Bennett's the single back. Three wide out to the bottom of your picture. Bennett has the ball going the other way and trying to delay, wait for the blocking to develop. In the meantime, he was taken down by Ted Johnson after a yard pickup. Keith, you know both of these teams in recent years have played in the Orange Bowl, and one of the well, the uh, great members of the Orange Bowl Committee has had some surgery recently. We'd like to send along our best wishes. Ben Benjamin is, uh, we're told, is home now, recovering from bypass, and a lot of his friends I know would like to know that. He's doing well, and Ben, uh, we just all send our best and tell you to get well soon, and we'll see you soon. Hurry up, Ben. The avocados are right. <laughs> We want, we, we, want one, we want one aside when you get back, as soon as, soon as you're ready. <laughs> Timeout called right here. Let's join John in our studio in New York. While we have the time, we're going to give you a golf update from Atlanta nationwide. Third round play here. Lee Trevino has a three-stroke lead. And tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern time on ABC, you can see final round coverage. Let's also get you up to date on the Ryder Cup. Europe now leading eight and a half points to seven and a half you need 14 and a half to win right now Keith let's go back to you Sebastian having a bit of fun here and while we're talking about friends and folks I want to say this that Todd Berry who's been with us for 14 years as our spotter 
and his uh, pretty lady Cheryl brought into this world uh, the prettiest lady in town Jordan Elizabeth three months as of uh, this week and she didn't make the trip to Rocky Mountain country so Pappy you owe her one I hope she looks like mama me too <laughs> she does <laughs> This grizzled old goat sitting over here to the right, Dave Burnson, that you can you can really can't see him. But he's been with us 13 years. We do have some fun popping around doing college football. Second down and eight now. 28 to 6, Miami Lady. Costa back. Gets it off and drop. Penalty flag. We got two flags. It was dropped by Clausell from behind him. Costa took a lick, too. I don't know. We may Holding have a foul there. On the offense. No, it's just a holding call. Linesman threw it. Caught one of the uh, interior linemen holding on the play. On second down and eight, Buffaloes have a look. They decide to take it. They do accept the penalty. Bill McCartney on the sidelines talking to Cordell Stewart. He is the quarterback coach. I personally think it's very difficult to be the head coach and also be a position coach. And I'll tell you why. Because I think a position coach becomes a buddy, a pal, a confidant. Well, you, you have to be in the meetings. You have to be in the meetings, too. Yep. Second down. Ferguson out to the 15 16 yard line before they can get a handle on the speedster one back uh, running attack watch the offensive line up front a little trap both the right tackle and the right guard pull that's Perry and Barber number 60 do a nice job Ferguson now got big uh, big plans he starts trying to run east and west he should just head north and got what the uh, finish of that play had for it instead of running sideways. Third down and seven. <laughs> Out of the shotgun, Costa steps up. Fourth row. Through a knuckleball. Fourth row. He had his man, too. See, that's, what, that's what Colorado wanted to do, make Costa move around. He doesn't, doesn't seem to throw very well on the run. He's thrown some low balls here in the game. And so Mike Chrissy comes in to punt. One other point on the head coach being a position coach, too, is that uh, you know, part of this is a result of reduction in staff personnel. You don't have as many coaches as you used to have. And they may go down another one next yeah, year. That's right. You got 10 Buffaloes up. They go for it, but can't get it. And Chrissy knocks it out of there. A good high hanger all the way back to the 40. And they force Charles Johnson into a fair catch. And there, Colorado will have it for the first down. The Colorado Buffaloes beleaguered at home 28 to 6, 7.54 to go in the third quarter. On the ball at the 40 yard line. Lamont Warren. The running back goes in motion to become a wide receiver. Cordell Stewart's pass is overthrown, intended for Charles Johnson. So they have handled Charles Johnson today, have these Miami Hurricanes. Well, I think they've gotten some people around. We've documented the fact that they're going to double cover him. The problem is Cordell Stewart is not going to other people. This is not Colorado. I'm talking about a sophisticated passing attack. They do not have side adjustments. It's a very simplified passing attack. They say he's not ready for that yet, and they're going to build on this in the future. Miami is just eating this passing game up. This is Lamont Warren with one of the better games of the day. Good for a first down on the Miami side of the field at the 48. Five seconds right here. So our ABC stations can tell you who they are. This is WFTV, Channel 9, Orlando. In the first half of the ball game, the Miami Hurricanes had three 80-yard drives, had a huge fight. It was 21 to six. 
Colorado had five players ejected. Miami seven ejected. Miami has scored in the second half as the Colorado defense broke down. Yeah, great play here and a good call. He's going to roll to our right. Watch the end. Number, uh, at short, number 50. He rushes up field. You just pitch it inside of him. You don't even have to block him. Now some good open field running of this young man right here. First down from the 16. Cordell Stewart throws it. The pass is drilled and the pass is caught. It was a hard throw and a good catch by James Kidd. Dexter Siegler, one of the better cornerbacks in the country, just nailed it, but he put it away. Pick up eight yards on the play. This Colorado offense is used to scoring points. They came in averaging 39 points over the first three games. We mentioned they're the second-ranked offense in the country. So long. Faithful before you yawn, uh, the band is still playing. This dance ain't over. Well, we mentioned this team can score points. They do have a lot of big play people on it. Going Looks for like two. Going, yep, going for two. You got Johnson going to the top of the screen. You got Salam lined up in the backfield. T.J. Cunningham to the left. Stewart going to hurry. Same play. And Salam to the goal line does not. Get there. Boy, he didn't miss by much. But they don't let him have it. And the score remains Miami 28 and Colorado 12. But remember, they're a mile high. Miami came from sea level. And your hip pocket can get heavy late in the fourth quarter. Straight blocking up front, man on man. Lewis gets driven out of there by a 64 at Stoltenberg, the center, and nice tough running by Salam. First touchdown against Miami before the fourth quarter in any game this year. From the reverse, that's Hammond 76. It's not tough, it's not easy down there, it's tough running. Anytime you get inside the 10 yard line, not going to be easy, but. Elliot Uzalak is now on the staff of Bill McCartney, uh, having come here as the offensive coordinator and works a lot with the, the big uglies in the trenches. And he's the one who brought in that, uh, that man blocking scheme, came here after a year off, finally got out of Ohio State and away from that Robert Smith mess. And does he ever <laughs> show a happy face being here in Boulder? And he came out looking uh, looking a lot better than than uh, he did uh, earlier when Robert Smith left school early to go on. When Robert Smith, uh, the way that story ended, was supposed to be the super student. That's beyond the field of play. It'll come out to the 21st down Monday night. ABC Sports will go to the Georgia Dome. Barry Foster and the defending AFC Central champion Pittsburgh Steelers, who are having a rugged start this year. We'll go in against the Atlanta Falcons in this story is rumbling around about Jerry Glenville's future. Live at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on ABC's Monday Night Football. Falcons went out and got all of those high-priced free agents, especially on defense, and, and seemed to help. Hey, Dan Deardorff wears pretty good-looking suits. <laughs> I haven't seen you in these suits. He lost some weight. What are you talking about? <laughs> First down. Bennett hit at the line of scrimmage. Good tough play by Ted Johnson, number 46, in the middle, and here's John. 
Keith, Notre Dame and Purdue has been raining throughout the game. Just a soggy mess. Pike gets nailed by Jeff Burris. Brian Hamilton, it pops right to him. The gift, 28 yards for the touchdown. There's now been eight turnovers in this game. 7-0, the Irish have the lead. Second down and nine, Ferguson, single back. receivers for the top seven are true freshmen on this ball club freshmen are true freshmen or redshirt freshmen first year players and that is a problem that is one of the reasons why Erickson went to the two back offense because he had a lot of depth at running back and he lost all of his starting wide receiver and some of the uh, backups so but I think he's answered the question today that uh, he is going to stay with the, the three back three wide receivers one back offense third down a yard and a half Steps up into the pocket, throws, pass completed, penalty flag back around where the quarterback threw the ball, and Darius Holland is saying, no way, it fouls against Miami. Well, he had a takedown there on the, on the left eight. tackle. On the other. This is two first downs in a row that Miami has picked up. This is, you know, people were saying, what's wrong with Miami's offense if they're playing Costa? Costa is not the problem. They have too many drop balls and too many penalties. That time, the left tackle, uh, Ricky Perry, just did a takedown on the defensive end. Pass was caught by German, as you saw, but it doesn't count. Here's a look at it over here. I know this is a passing shot, but watch these two guys out here on the outside. That's the tackle. Watch him as he, the end gets around him. He's just going to take him and throw him down. Now, the official is right up here at the top. He's looking right at that. That's all he is supposed to do after the ball is snapped. So put the football back at the six-yard line. And it's third down and 24 for Miami. Now the crowd is up, making as much noise as they can in this high altitude. Again. 
We haven't heard from Jack Aroot in a while. Does he have his win back yet? Is he upright Keith, yet? Keith, I'm here, and believe it or not, I'm trying to chase down a rumor. Get this. You know who's sitting in the stands for this game? Scott Bentley. They've, Scott Bentley, who's from Colorado, he's here in the stands. We're trying to find him. If we do, you can bet your button a dollar that we're going to talk to him. <laughs> Scott Bentley, of course, the place kicker. He is from Aurora, Colorado. Went to Florida State. He's the man who's supposed to solve the wide right problems for the Seminoles. The Seminoles are not playing this week. So the penalty moved the ball back to the 45-yard line. That play, a broken play, as Cordell Stewart got something out of nothing, moved the ball to the 42-yard line. Bentley was the number one place kicker coming out of uh, high school this year. He's a freshman with Florida State. We'll see him in a couple of weeks when we have... Uh, the Hurricanes visiting Tallahassee. Second down and seven. Lamont Warren has the ball. Gets to the 38. He's got to go to the 35 for the first down. He needs three on third down. A lot of people came over for this ball game. I understand that uh, some of the Broncos were over here, including Big John. Phil McCartney needs some points. At Elway. 254. Elway and the Broncos had their hands full Monday night last uh, in Kansas City, didn't they? Yep. Who did? James Hill, the fullback. Oh, my goodness. Salam is clobbered by number 91. Pouring in Darren Bryan, who is also from Aurora, Colorado. Boy, there were three canes in there in a hurry. We could see Bryan on top. Loss on the play, back to the 41, where it is fourth down. Brian is right here. He's just going to fight his way through and get in there and make the play. Both defensive ends upfield. This defense, a very aggressive upfield style of play. Marley got a piece of the action. On fourth down they go. Fourth and five. Cordell Stewart's pass is through. Charles Johnson makes a great catch. Siegler. He got him one-on-one -on -one for a change, and he hit him. Well, you're exactly right. One-on-one -on -one for a change, and he beat him. As I, as I mentioned, not a sophisticated passing attack, but when you get these guys one-on-one, -on -one, and Johnson can go down and drive him off, Pride almost got in there again. Strong arm. That's a big first down, and I think it was a good play. Fourth down, you had to go for it. 150 to play in the third quarter. 28-12, Miami lead. Stewart back. Down the pipe. Up in the air by Ray Lewis, the freshman middle linebacker, playing with a sore leg. He almost got that thing up in the air high enough for somebody to have a chance at interception. Well, he had 12 tackles last week against Virginia Tech. He's had nine tackles so far here today, and we haven't even completed the, the uh, three quarters. We've had a ton of penalties. I mean, a truckload. But no turnover. Second down and ten. Warren. There's Lewis. Number 52, Ray Lewis. 6'1", 216, freshman, Lakeland, Florida. He was not listed in the Miami book no information about him in the book because he had not passed his SAT when the book was printed. But he was highly recruited, an MVP for his team in both his junior and senior years, had over 200 tackles. Passed his SAT in June. That's the last opportunity he had to take it. Got the results in July. Called Miami. Says, hey, coach, I passed it. Do you have a scholarship? A couple other guys didn't make it. They said, yes. Come on, you got a scholarship. Pass intended. For Warren swinging out, thrown behind him, incomplete. Mitch Berger comes back on the field now. On the fourth down. It was close, close to being a backward pass, but went out of bounds. Official ruled that it wasn't. If it was a backward pass, they would have moved it back. Berger into a 
Backward pass being a lateral, obviously. Going to hit it right around the 47. I mean, 37. For a 47 yarder, it was plenty long. I mean, that was worth 65 yards. He was above the upright. And it is good. And so, with 126 to play in the third quarter, it is now 28 15, a 13 point lead for the Miami Hurricane. And that touchdown they grabbed when that receiver, Ellison, got loose. It's a big touchdown right now. All right, Jack. Keith, we've got number 11 here, a different number 11. It's Rosemary Costa, Frank Costa's mother. Now, tell us a little bit about when he was growing up in South Philly. We understand you drove him to school one day and got a haircut. Tell me that story. He was always in trouble, doing little mischievous things, and he took a scissor out of his school bag and cut the back of my hair. But that's one of many things that he did growing up. How big of a handful was he when he was a young kid? A handful. <laughs> what about this having to wait to be a quarterback? Was it ever tough on him? Did he ever have to talk to you about it? Sure it was tough, but he was willing to wait, and I'm glad that he did. Well, she's been down there. has been very excited, Keith, because that last series, it looked as if maybe he was going to go for the first down. She was jumping up and down, and when they called it back, Oh, boy, was she upset. <laughs> well, it's, it's getting nervous time, I'll tell you. This, this party's not over. Colorado has scored on its last two possessions. Berger drills it to German. That, oh, he dropped it in the end zone. Better put it down. Oh, my goodness. That's a freshman mistake. Yep. He probably thought he had to come out. Well, if, if, if the momentum carried the ball in the end zone and he was still in the end zone, even if he muffed it, he never had possession of it. No. Nope. He could stay in. One of the officials, one of the linesmen, I think it was, got caught in the middle of that. The German was in the end zone, muffed the ball, and uh, I don't think he had to return it. But he, no, he did to. He did not. So, Kane's got a problem, and here's Jack. Keith, I told you I'd find him. Look who I found. The guy that's going to hopefully end the wide right classic, Scott Bentley from Colorado. You got a week off. So far, you've watched Miami. What do you think? And they look good on the road. You know, we're going to have to be, we're going to have to be gunning that game. I mean, hey, they look real good, and they're uh, tough to beat on the road. So we just got to hope we're looking good too. Now, Bobby Bob recruited you specifically for your foot. We'll talk about that after we watch this play. The ball is just short of the ten where it's first down for the Canes. Colorado trying to get back into the hunt. Costa quickly to the sidelines. Good to Chris T. Jones. Chris Jones is up across the 20 to the 23, and that's a first down, and let's go back to Jack. As so many people in Tallahassee have said, their hopes ride on you to end those wide rights. You were recruited for your foot. What kind of pressure do you feel going into that game? You know, I feel a lot of pressure going into that game, but, you know, the big thing is i got to look at it just as another game, you know. I can't have the wide right thing in my mind at all, or, or I might miss that way. If I do, you know, I'm human, I might. Um, hopefully, hopefully I won't, but uh, i got to treat it just like another game. One more question after this. I like him. He's got a lot of points. First down. Costa. Throws. Pass caught by Jonathan Harris. Very difficult pass. Great catch. Great catch by Harris. Jack again. Well, Keith, when we talk about the wide right classic, two times in a row, field goals that one could have won the game and Miami could have tied the game. You watched those games on television. What were your thoughts? Did that play any part in your decision to go to Florida State? I think, you know, it put a big emphasis on the kicking game at Florida State. You know, they realized that it's an important part of the game, and I wanted to be a part of that. Well, good to see you. Thank you. Scott Bentley, we'll see him October 9 in Tallahassee as Miami plays Florida State. First down for the Canes. The ball is up on the 36-yard line. This is Donnell Bennett, who will put a hat on you. And he did a little paint swapping right there with number 23, Greg Lindsay. That, that conversation with Bentley, just let me say this. I don't think it's right for us to all throw all of our pressure on this kid. I mean, Florida State may blow... Uh, Miami out by three touchdowns and he may never have to kick it but uh, you know what has happened in the past was not his fault and I think you're right he was a very level headed kid and if he got the opportunity I think he'll do very well. Yep. Costa may be hurt the last time he was sacked throwing that ball he was moving his arm around a little bit 
Bennett now has 103 yards in the ball game on 15 carries. He's been the hoss for him today. The official stopped it here for some reason. You see uh, uh, the quarterback Costa rotating his arm around. And trying to keep it loose. He was sacked a little bit earlier on that completion to Harris. And got up moving his right arm. And usually that means, and he's done it about five or six times. He is 15 of 22 for 209 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Nobody warming up. Tough place to call the play at the line of scrimmage. This is Ferguson. And he's close to his first down. I think he had to go a little bit beyond the 46. He's right at the 46. Time expiring in the third quarter of play. And uh, the referee has stopped the clock. Peers across the way and says we will measure with 10 seconds to play in quarter number three. You know, while they bring the change on, the last time I was here to do a football game, Bob, was October 21, 1972. Colorado broke an Oklahoma win streak, beat the Sooners 20 to 14. Charlie Davis had a big game that day. Eddie Crowder was the coach. I got acquainted with Ralphie, he ran me right up into the back of a truck, <laughs> and our producer, Bob Goodrich, was a young PA. Uh huh. So you got an up close and personal look <laughs> at Ralphie, huh? Yeah, I've been informed that he was a pretty good PA. <laughs> uh, I was short. Well, I had a nice long visit with Dal Ward. Met a lot of old friends over this part of the country. They've been very gracious and hospitable to us while we've been here. It's a fun place to come. Amen. Chuck Ninus, executive director of the CFA, he lives here in Boulder. We had a chance to visit with him and his wife, Patty. I'd give him credit for the dinner, except I don't think he cooked it. Just a tad short, as you can see. This will be the last snap of the third quarter. This is a situation where you want to keep the ball, and I think rather than go for a big play on a third and short, they're going to let the quarter run out here. I think it's more important that you pick up the first down in this situation and maintain possession. 13-point lead Miami back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Blue skies of Colorado, Rocky Mountain country. Bolson Field, the University of Colorado in Boulder. Final quarter coming up. Miami 28, Colorado 15. Miami ranked third in the nation coming in. Colorado 13. First down. Well, if you're ever committed to the one back after playing with a two back and one back and trying to run the ball, third and short in a critical time, you go one back and pick up the first down. They're committed to the one back. Look at the third quarter stats through three quarters. Total yardage, Miami by a little over 100 yards. The amazing thing, no turnovers. These two teams came in tied for sixth in the nation in the best turnover margin in the country in the time of possession about the same. So it's first down at the 49-yard line for the Kane. Little pop to Jonathan Harris, gets a block, gets going to the 40, 35, falls down, stays up, he scores. It'll be first down at the 31. Now let's find out what George Brett has decided to do. John, tell us, will you please? Yes, I will, Keith. He's made it official. At the end of this season, George Brett will retire. Right now, a 305 a lifetime batting average, 3,147 hits, 315 home runs. Next up, the Hall of Fame, that in 1998. He'll go in, of course, with Nolan Ryan. He'll be a VP of the Royals. Back to you. That'll be after he hustles some bucks on the golf course. Pretty good. Ball is handed. Ferguson I think it was Wolfork, the linebacker, who really we haven't called his name too much today. 
Taylor really caused the fumble. Number 56 in the black jersey right there. Being blocked by Barber. Just reaches in, knocks the ball loose from Ferguson. Ferguson had a fumble last week. Big turnover. We mentioned there was no turnovers yet. Here it is right here. First turnover of the day for either team. All right, let's see if they can do something with the break. Salam is the deep back. Cordell Stewart sends him outside. Stewart passes away and almost intercepted. No catch. No catch. No sir. Charles Johnson tried to scoop it off the ground, but he couldn't do it. Dexter Siegler almost had it. Just doesn't see Clean Siegler coming. Looks to me like he caught it. Looks yeah. to me like he caught it. That official looking right at him. The back judge was just a few feet from him, and he instantly waved it off. Yeah, but he can be wrong instantly, too. Well, he's right there. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It ain't going to work. <laughs> Salam up to the 40-yard line in the first down. He says it's incomplete. It's incomplete. Wrong or no? That's for sure, and I'm with them all the way. They can make mistakes just like anybody else. Uh, four possessions for Colorado in the second half. They've scored on their last two possessions. The momentum definitely on their side. That fumble by Miami wasn't as critical as it could have been because it was kind of deep in Colorado's own territory. Short gets away, throws low. T.J. Cunningham, number eight, is the man trying to scoop it, but Stewart has not thrown that well on the run today. He has not. not. He has not thrown well. That ball, he was outside the pocket. Cunningham was open. Try to throw it too hard when you're out there running. You just need to take a little bit off of it and make sure that you're going to be completing the pass to somebody. Stewart in the first half versus the second half. A lot of that yardage in the second half was that shovel pass. That he completed, they may try to go back and try that. That has worked uh, pretty nicely. He's missed his last four. Blitz, blitz. Works. Lewis. Ray Lewis. Losses all the way back to the 33 yard line. This kid is really uh, something else. Timed that blitz very nicely. Got the cadence down, upper left of your screen, right there, just above the guard, times it perfectly. You don't know what's going on down there until you've heard the cadence, and he's heard it, and he's heard it, and he timed it very nicely, and the guard didn't see him coming. 13 tackles for the true freshman. That's 25 in the last two games, and this one's not over. back when he first came to Miami because he was so small and he was he's fearless Jamie German is the return man for Mitch Berger's punt gets it off he took an extra step and advanced with it before he kicked it and angled it off the side of his foot so uh, half a shank will give Miami the ball in pretty good field position at the 29 yard line Game, it was Colorado's offense that was putting up all the yardage, but Miami's offense has come alive, reverting back to their old one back offense. On first down, call it the 30 yard line, Custer sets him up, gives it to Bennett, Bennett runs into Wolford, and finally turned back in by Gary Hicks and taken down. 
Justice Byron White, Supreme Court Justice, retired early this year. He was University of Colorado's first All-American back in 1937, as you can see what the Hurricanes have been doing over the last seven years. They retired jersey number 24, and he went on to become the third Colorado football player to receive a Rhodes Scholarship. Went to Oxford in 39. His brother, Clayton, was the second football player to get a Rhodes Scholarship, and George Carlson was the first. The three Buffaloes had gone to Oxford to study the Rhodes Scholarship. Costas pass to the tight end, Clausell, and that's the first down for the Miami Hurricanes, out to the 41-yard line. And Bob, an old teammate of years, uh, being honored uh, here at uh, Boulder today and going into the foundation National Foundation Hall of Fame Dick Anderson Dick Anderson uh, going into uh, in uh, December in New York the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame dinner Dick Anderson there he is on the right getting a little tan on the Golden Dome there went on to play with the uh, Miami Dolphins and an outstanding career let me correct that it was Gerard Daphnis not Clausell that made uh, the pass reception here comes uh, James Stewart number 28 the sophomore out of Vero Beach and uh, the 235 pounder angles up across the 46 yard line you know 235 pounds uh, just 10 years ago was in the trenches <laughs> that's true and now they're running backs whiteouts well, they've got a lot. This is this is the fifth running back for Miami that has played today. Bennett and Jones, uh, Ferguson, Harris, and Stewart. That's part of the reason he went back to the two-back offense, other than the fact that their running game last year was like 87th in the country. They wanted to run a little bit more. But uh, this, this is the offense that, uh, Ferguson, uh, that uh, Erickson is going to use, we got to believe, for the rest of the season. People moving around. risking interception on the play. The reason we haven't called Larry Jones' name for a while, he was kicked out of the ball game. He was one of the seven players ejected at the close of the first half. Defense faked the charge. Offense moved. The offensive lineman moved, I think, was the sequence. Dead ball. Illegal yep. procedure on the offense. A dead ball. Offside on the defense. Oh, well. Play will offset and replay second down. Tomorrow night, America's Funniest Hour is back on ABC. Bob Saget keeps the cameras safely rolling on America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by the all-new America's Funniest People, starting at 7, 6 Central on ABC. Say, well, you know, that what happens there is a defensive lineman moves, Keith. A defensive lineman moves, and then an offensive guy reacts. And they don't call anything. And I, I don't agree with them. I mean, some, some, this guy is going to move, and then all of a sudden he's going to move over here. Now, a defensive man's going to move a little bit, and then the, the offensive guy moves. The defensive man wasn't offside when the ball was snapped, so it's the offensive guy that moved illegally. Although that tight end is allowed to move, but the ball was snapped, and he was in motion. It's second down and five. And he gets about two yards on that carry. We go back to what, uh, as you look at Notre Dame, pulling away. Arizona scoring some points today for a change to Oregon State. We'll check and see how many points the Arizona defense scored. Yeah, right. Nobody beat in California yet. I'll tell you what, I'll bet you that Howard Schnellenberger has got a good football team up there at Louisville. Timeout call, third down and three coming up with Miami leading 28 to 15. Those are the top AP top 25 folks that are not playing uh, later. Uh, you've got Penn State playing Rutgers. Syracuse is playing Cincinnati. Look out for that one. Penn State's uh, kind of uh, flexing its muscle in its first year in the Big Ten. Yeah, they are. Defense, terrific defense. Third down and three for the Miami Hurricanes at their own 48-yard line. Donnell Bennett puts 
shoulders square. Down goes the head. The knees pumping away. And he's got a first down. Go back to the point on Howard Schnellenberger, who's now at Louisville, and I think is a very good team coming up. We've got a Buffalo herd on the play. But it was Howard Schnellenberger that started things rolling at the University of Miami. A guy named Kelly showed up. First name Jim. Ex-line guy that uh, they wanted to make a linebacker out of at Penn State. And it was with Kelly and company that Schnellenberger produced the first national championship at Miami. And since then, it's been nothing but success. Jimmy Johnson took over, and he won a national championship. And then Dennis Erickson took over, and he won a national championship. They've won four championships in ten years, and really, they've done it. If you want to think about Frank Costa, each year, they've done it in an odd-numbered year. And they've also done it with a quarterback that was starting uh, for the first time that year. Incidentally, the man heard is Ted Johnson, inside linebacker, junior from Carlsbad, California. Let's take a look at the top ten, the way things are going today. Everybody is winning or they are off. Alabama won big. Notre Dame is winning. Nebraska wins big. Michigan 21 over Houston. And Oklahoma. Oklahoma pretty strong this year. Time still out for an injured Ted Johnson. Though groggy and helped off the field, Ted Johnson was walking. He leaves the game with 12 tacklers in his inside linebacker position in Colorado. Right now for Miami, it's first down at the Buffalo 48, 9 minutes and 40 seconds to play in the game. And Miami leading 28 to 15. There goes Stewart. Big hole. Finally knocked out of bounds, and I'll tell you what, he laid a lick on Greg Lindsay. He turned him upside down, the strong safety for the Buffalo. Again, the reason the one-back running game is working for Miami is because they're spreading everybody out. Normally, there'd be a linebacker over here to our left side, but he's out over the, the uh, wide receiver. 16 is Russell. He's the inside linebacker that came in for Johnson. Watch 23. He just gets run over. But you spread them out, you create some holes just by the alignment. First down at the 31. Buffaloes are offside. That'll be five yards. And stop the clock at 921. Stewart the ball carrier. Offside on the defense. Here's a look at Miami's first-year starting quarterbacks uh, and the uh, final national championship uh, ranking. Uh, Kozar won in 83, Walsh in 87, Erickson in 89, Toretta in 91, and Frank Costa. A lot of talk in Miami about is he going to be the next one? Uh, Erickson's about to start, isn't he, for Tampa Bay? Yep, he sure is. Costa doing very well today in the one-back. First down and five. Cut it. Pass is not well thrown. Intended for Al Shipman, number 32. Second about uh, Bill McCartney and the things that he does, he doesn't talk much about. Bob Simmons, a defensive line coach, was named assistant head coach this spring. Uh, he's a black man says he's ready to be a head coach. Well, now, currently there are three black coaches at Division 1A schools. Ron Dickerson at Temple, Jimmy Caldwell at Wake Forest, and Juan Cooper at Eastern Michigan. Dickerson and Caldwell were on McCartney's first staff at Colorado. He's produced six head coaches off his staff. Since he came here. This is Stewart. Looks pretty tired. There was nobody at home in the middle of the field. Just straight blocking the offensive line. Nobody pulls. 16 is Russell. He gets blocked out of there by Jones, the center. 
And everybody else, the defensive backs are covering wide receivers looking for pass. Kick is good. That's about as empty a center field as I've seen. Well, the problem is, you just saw earlier, Ted Johnson, the inside linebacker, went off the field. Yep. And his replacement, uh, Russell, a redshirt freshman, was in there. And Stewart, who is the fifth back to get in for the University of Miami in that one back. Miami scoring drive, 70 yards. It's a big play. So it's 35-15 and takes most of the mystery out of the contest. So here's what has happened up to this point. First quarter, Miami ahead 7-0, 80-yard drive as Bennett took it in from two yards. Also first quarter, Mitch Berger, 54-yard field goal, 7-3. Colorado on the board. Second quarter, Donnell Bennett, second touchdown, a tough, good, 45-yard touchdown run, breaking a tackle. Then it was 14-6, Berger's 44-yard field goal. And then 21 to 6 says Chris T. Jones hauled in a 25 yard pass for a touchdown. Third quarter, it was to 28 6 as A.C. Tellison caught a 37 yard pass for a touchdown after bobbling it a bit. 28 to 12 as Salam scored from seven yards for Colorado. Then it went to 28 15 on a 47 yard field goal by Mitch Berger. And now we just saw a moment ago Stewart gallop into the end zone to make it 35 to 15. The kickoff by Barnwell to the five and the first return of the day by James Kidd. And he comes across the 25 to the 27. And uh, here's Jack. The problem, as you said, Bob Greasy, on that touchdown was the absence of Johnson. He's here on the sidelines. What the doctors have said is he is suffering from a mild concussion. Very doubtful whether he will return the rest of the day. He's plucky, boy. He stuck his head right into that melee, yep. and he's done it all day long. One other thing that McCartney has done for this program is win a national championship, Keith. Don't be misled by the fact that his team is, looks like they're going to lose two in a row. First down and ten as Cordell Stewart throws to T.J. Cunningham. And he's got the ball to the 37-yard line. May not be a first down. But Colorado is not used to losing at home. They've only lost one game in the last 27 played here at Folsom Field. The Hurricanes, on the other hand, are a very good road team. They have won 12 straight on the road and 39 of the last 44. That goes back to 1983. So the Canes play well at home well, as well as on the road. They got that 52 game. And all it's Charles Johnson. The pass is good for a first down for Buffalo as it goes down the Miami 45 yard line. Most of the players in Miami colors are from Florida. For Colorado, it's a state with a light population. 27 from Colorado and 21 from California, part of the roster for the Buffaloes right now. Make up of the two teams quite different. The pass is low. The pass is not good. T.J. Cunningham trying to scoop it up. Good to T.J. And he is from Aurora. Boy, if they had all those kids up that have come from Aurora up there playing ball, they could start their own team. <laughs> Injury report to the Colorado sideline number 46. Ted Johnson, a concussion. He will not return. Johnson takes off to the 35-yard line in the first half. Seven and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Here again, Jack. Well, Keith and Bob, as you said, Boulder, Colorado, the home of the College Football Association, the CFA. And one of the things we talk about all the time is the good works of people. Well, the CFA is involved with one, and Derek West of the Colorado Buffaloes was cited for exemplary community service when the 11 national players be cited by the CFA for good works this year. That's Lamont Warren carrying the ball, but running sideways, and it will not going to get you much against Miami. Because they just, you can't outrun them, that's why. Sideways, they don't, uh, they've got the speed. Warren is the, came in to today, the leading rusher in the Big Eight. 
Av averaging 95 a game. You saw that Boston College scored 66 points. They've been kind of frustrated. They were one of the teams. In fact, they lost to Miami in the open. Let's look at the number one rusher in the Big Eight. That's just through the first three games, and that's against non-conference opponents. He came back a little lighter, having run track. He's a better running back this year than he was last year. And that'll be good for your first down for Colorado, as they've got the ball down near the Miami 21-yard line now. But next week, Boston College gets together with Syracuse. So if Tom Buckman and uh, Glenn Foley and that bunch have found their offense, it might be an interesting Just inside the 22, Stewart runs away from the pressure. Throws, and it's incomplete. Dexter Siegler had his hands on it again. Well, he's had his hands on about four passes today that, given a little luck, he could have picked off. You know, that Boston College Syracuse game could be one of those CFA regional games next week. And then, after the regional games are done, we'll have Notre Dame and Stanford from the farm at 3.30 Eastern time. Talking about Howard Schnellenberger, I think he and those two pictured there, right there, Walsh and Holtz, are three of, of the best sideline coaches in college football. Great catch by Charles Johnson. A remarkable young man who took his degree in marketing from Colorado August of this year. And by the time he's done, may own all the receiving records here at CU. Things are loosening up for Johnson a little bit. Miami secondary not doubling so much, playing three deep and just taking away any big plays. Johnson caught uh, 57 passes for over 1,000 yards last year. Ball is first down and goal, Colorado at the Miami 7. Stewart lobs to the corner. Johnson got it. Touchdown. He got the high. Blitzing, that's man-to-man -man coverage. Siegler, the best that the Hurricanes have to offer. It's a great throw. And a nice catch. He'll be in the top uh, round of the NFL draft. That's five catches, 63 yards, and a touchdown for Johnson. Kick. some offense you'll, you'll you'll play that way and i heard this morning on radio that the southern baptist convention was considering uh second out of Atlanta, moving their convention to denver i think the folks ought to start making a potato salad now and denver <laughs> have enough we're going to kick off for 35 yard line burger Watches it roll off the tee. He's looking for an onsider here. You can tell by the way everybody's lined up. And Dennis Erickson and all of his coaches have put in there. The special teams coaches put in all of the good hands people up front. New college rule. You've got to have four members of the kicking team on either side of the ball. At least. There's right. the onside try. Oh, it's a good match. This is just 
That's an excellent kick. This is what you want. You want to kick it and get a bounce. That's a poor play there by German, the freshman. Now two of them are fighting for it. Not only do they not get it, but they're helping move the ball further downfield. Colorado down by 13 with six and a half minutes to play. Ball is first down at the Miami 36-yard line. And the place is coming alive. Lamont Warren behind Cordell Stewart. He looks for Charles Johnson. He completes the pass in front of Dexter Siegler. Not a first down. It'll be second down for about two. Now the confidence level is up. Johnson is there. Cordell Stewart, the quarterback, is on target. And the momentum is has got a black shirt. The Hurricanes are, are just standing around reacting. WFTV, Channel 9, Orlando. Just a few minutes ago, it looked like Miami had this game put away at 35-15. to 15. But Colorado scores to make it 35-22. With 5.29 to play, they're down on the Miami 24-yard line. And Stewart throws down the middle. The pass is completed to the 5-yard line. First down and goal to go for Colorado. Charles Johnson made the catch. safety. There's the collision right there. 19 is uh, 6. 19 is Richardson. 6 is Harris. 4 is White. And here's the collision. Right side of your screen, 4 is White. I don't like, know. It, maybe, it looks to me like Harris ought to be the one that was rattling yeah, around maybe by. Maybe he just got, got his bell rung. Let's check in with John. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Let's get you up to date on Arizona and Oregon State. Chuck Levy, 42 yards. You know about their defense. Today they did it on offense as well. Rolling to the victory, 33 to nothing, as Arizona is now 4-0 on the season. Meanwhile, Texas and Louisville, the Cardinals, also now 4-0. Best start since 1972. 41-10 was the final there. We'll continue to update scores throughout your game. Right now, let's take you back to you. Keith. 
All right, John. Charles Johnson is already the all-time leading receiver for the Colorado Buffalo. He did that in game number two against Baylor. He's just set the Buffaloes up for a first and goal at the five-yard line with Salam the deep back. Ball is handed to the up back. James Hill. Touchdown, Buffalo. Swift-footed, uh, nimble fellow named Aru, flashing through the end zone. Well, it's, a, it's a big point too because uh, he is. He got it again. So you have a six-point ball game. What looked like a lock early in the fourth quarter for Miami is now just six points. That's the right guard. He's going to pull and create a hole, a gap for the fullback right up the center. The cross block between the center, Stoltenberg, and Hammond, 76. As advertised, the number two offense in the country, Colorado, going against the number two defense in the country, Miami. And it took a long time, but the number two offense is catching up. And the fat lady has set out. For now. Do you go onside again, or you did with five minutes to play? Do you not know? I think your chances of getting two onside kicks are not very good. You kick it deep and play defense. Yep. The pressure is on Miami offensively right now. Miami's got uh, again wide receivers, defensive backs, linebackers, and running backs out on the field. Just in case Colorado does play another onside kick. But this time Berger is lining it up and taking a long walk. It looks to me like he's going to take a full swing out. Steelers and the Atlanta Falcons live at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on ABC's Monday Night Football. We get word that Paul White, the uh, wide, uh, the cornerback for the Hurricanes, uh, has a concussion. Not be back today. Playing on the rug. It's a good one. They got those special shoes. They get good traction. They're going like a runaway train, and when they run together, they get hurt. First down at the 20. Costa needs to get him out of the hole here. Buffalo defense. Corner. Give it to Bennett. Bounces it outside. And gets it out to the 27-yard line. A good tough run by Donnell before Woolfork brings him down. Ron Woolfork, 240-pounder, 6'4", came here as a quarterback. 
And Bill McCartney was recruiting him. He said, yes, you can play quarterback in Colorado. Come on. So he put him out there on the field. And all of a sudden, he realized at his size and his foot speed that he was probably fifth or sixth among the quarterbacks. And so he went looking for another place to play and settled down at end or outside linebacker. And he's become a terrific football player. Sure has. Second down and two and a half. This is Stewart for the first down. So James Stewart, who blew up the middle for a big score for Miami, ran over Greg Lindsay a little while ago, and this time Greg turned the tables and took him down. Stewart now five carries and 53 yards. because Knutson and some of the other defenders were going for the ball. Bennett, still sitting on the ground. There's Big John from Great Falls. Montana. He's the only player on this team from the state of Montana. what is important. That's what's forcing them to call the time. Two minutes and 49 seconds. In a 35-29 ball game, Miami leading by six. They led by 20 in the fourth quarter. But the Buffs have come storming back. Alabama apparently has figured out how to score some points. Jay Barker pulled a muscle, stomach muscle, and Brian Bergdorf got a chance to play for the tie today and made the most of it. Jay Barker has never lost a game as a starter at Alabama. Is he 18, 19 in a row or something like that? I think he's probably 20 now. Put it on the 36, make it third down and six. Right here, you would think Miami's going to throw it. German is in there. Christy Jones is in there. And so is Jonathan Hurts. Look for the blitz. Bennett's a pretty good receiver. Pass is thrown to the tight end, and it is caught by Clausel, and it is good for a first down. Just by the hair of your chinny chin chin. I mean, no more than a foot. That's close, but it's a first down. So by that much, the Miami Hurricanes keep possession of the ball. Colorado has one first down remaining. And time, two minutes and 33 seconds. James Stewart in the backfield. Buster gives it to him. Big hole left side for Stewart. Ball is slipped away from him, but they call him down at the 36. He gave him the ball. Colorado's ball. It is Colorado's ball, but he's down 
Knudsen by Lebowski. Now you shouldn't be carrying the ball in this hand Long anyway. Hand. Switch it over. Long hand. Hudson with a big time play. Hudson has made 15 starts in his career and has 11 interceptions. He's used to taking the ball away. So Hudson with a big play. Colorado with a big opportunity against Miami. Cordell Stewart throws to the sideline. Oh my goodness, Rowan Marley had it, couldn't hold it. How many times has Miami had their hands on the ball today and not caught it? Got the ball in the wrong hand. Yep. It'll be on the outside hand. That is perfect for the defensive guy to take it away right there. As Hudson strips the ball, he has possession, but he's down. And that's why they started the possession at the 36. Stewart on second down and 10. Steps away from the pressure. Throws it as deep as he can for Charles Johnson. And it is too far and out of bounds. And Horn Sapp goes over to Cordell Stewart. Slapped him off the butt and said, probably, you're a tough guy. Warren just pounded it if he let it go. Well, the marquee matchup coming into the game was Colorado offensively and could Miami defensively stop them. It's only fitting that it comes down to this. Two minutes left. Six points behind. Colorado with one timeout. Miami with two. It's third down and ten. Stewart, good protection. Jackson's got it. Seven-pound junior, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Well, it's gut check time. First down on the 17-yard line of Miami. Stewart turns and hands the ball to Salon. And Salon is a hard-running tailback. And he's down to the 11. That's six yards and a minute and 20 to play in the ball game. And Sapp has come back. Sapp has come back. No, not Sapp. Lopez. Lopez. <laughs> Lopez. Say, Lopez. They carry Sapp off and he's back. Lopez just <laughs> galloped in there. He's looking for Johnson. And again, it's the Miami defensive back that gets his hands on it. And you got a flag. Well, they were lucky that that one was not picked off. <laughs> Going to back up the Buffaloes. Oh, 
Kevin Factor's got a habit of walking around taking his hat off. He had his hat off during the big fight. <laughs> Get that thing back to him, Kevin. You know, offensive linemen, sometimes when they're pass blocking, they'll get their hands up in the face mask of the defensive man. That's what they did. And that's, that's illegal. So the face mask call goes against Colorado. I don't think the Buffalo realize that they're going to be penalized here. Now they're going to back them up. They were coming out of the huddle. the Hurricanes actually leads the nation. He's tied in the nation with three interceptions in two games. He's had his hands on the head. Yeah, he's he's the touched game. a lot of them. Yep. And he's lined up on Johnson. That was what, a 19-yard penalty? 19-yard penalty. Pass is thrown low. He's on his knees. He's down right there. It's T.J. Cunningham. Can't catch the ball on your knees in college ball and get up and run. So on the 25-yard line. That'll bring up third down. It'll be third down and 18, all the 25 of Miami. Time remaining, 30 seconds. Colorado has one. Time out remaining. I think I'd find Johnson, get outside the pocket, just give him some time. He's looking for him. He had it, now he lost it. Now he throws, pass is caught, man tumbles out of bounds, stopping the clock, 17 seconds. It's James Kidd. This is very similar to what, uh, what uh, uh, Colorado did at Stanford last week, except they were on the other side. They got beat at the end of the game. They need a touchdown. They need a pass into the end zone. You have 17 seconds left. They can make a first down at about the uh, six or seven yard line. But this is it. Miami has Georgia Southern in front of them, so they'll have sort of a fix them up game before they have to go to Tallahassee. But here's the big play. Stuart Lux goes for Johnson. The pass is incomplete. Double coverage. Number six was there. That's Terrace Harris. 19. C.J. Richardson was there. And so was Carlos Jean. There were three of them on Charles Johnson. They knew where it was going, didn't they? Yes, sir. So, at 13 seconds, the hope for the Buffaloes finally expire. we got to go to Johnson. You got to get deep enough, which he did. He just drove him off. The ball needs to be there now. It's too late. Yep. And it should have been thrown a little outside. A little bit quicker, a little bit more to the outside. Had a chance. And so it goes over at the 17, where Miami has it. 13 seconds to play. So the number 13 team came storming back against number three, but has come up just short. Costa takes the snap, goes down on the knee. Remember, Colorado has a timeout to spin. So they will not stop it. They'll let it go. Final score, Miami 35, Colorado 29. The Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game for Miami. Ray Lewis, 14 tackles in the